All right, we'll see. There's a look at the Aggie head coach, Doug Martin, now in his eighth full season, his ninth year total with the program. The Aggies, the lone FBS program to play in the spring. They won one, they lost one. They have 40 newcomers, while the Miners have a lot back from their 3-5 and five team in 2020. The Aggies won the toss. They will receive to start a new campaign. The first home game in 644 days. And kicking off for UTEP will be Gavin Beckley. He puts it in the air. And it's through the end zone. So we'll get our first look at the Aggie offense. It was the competition, Danny and Camp. And Jonah Johnson will get the start here tonight in the opener. Yeah, you know, we saw both these quarterbacks in spring ball. Both had some ups and downs, but it clearly Jonah stepped up in the fall here. So he's got the helm. He's going to start off. He should be a good guy. He's not afraid. He's a dual threat. He can throw the ball. He can run the ball. Let's see if he can't get this offense over. Best unit for the Aggies, the most experienced unit, is the offensive line, led by Ole Miss grad transfer Eli Johnson. Jonah Johnson has been in the program now for a year and a half. His first fall snaps, though, after playing in both spring games. He's out of Madera, California, 25 minutes from Fresno, where he played for Fresno City College. The referee today is Kevin Brunette. The officials, I think, are trying to make sure the right football is going to be snapped here for the Aggies. You know, that seems like a little thing, but it's but it matters because if you're used to playing with one ball in particular and you get something else in your hands to start with, it makes it hard. So you're going to get the ball situation situated, and let's get this thing going. Omari Samuels in the backfield with Jonah Johnson. Omari, a big-time transfer from Michigan. He's playing in his first game, period, with the Aggies. Did not play in either spring game due to a groin injury. Jonah Johnson will toss it to Omari Samuels, who has tons of running room. He can be really effective, Danny, in the passing game, in addition to running the football. Yeah, you know, it's a great call coming out. You know, so everyone's thinking, run, run, run. You know, you got Omari Samuels, so why not run the ball? Well, they were all up on the line of scrimmage, so you have just a little quick dump right out to the outside to Omari, get the ball in the open, nice little pitch and catch. Omari gets some extra yards in there. Good confidence start for him. 14-yard pickup on the catch and run for Samuels, who's from Los Lunas in state. He's the pistol back here. Play action, Johnson, heavy front side coverage, and the pass is dropped by newcomer Tomas Whitford. The tight end is back this year. Whitford had a great camp, Danny. I've been very big on, on tight ends. You know, tight ends are the toughest thing. Simply, coming from the secondary perspective, it's hard to know. Is the tight end going to block? Should you come down and, and uh, force the run, or is he going to go out for a pass? It's hard to tell. In this case, he stayed for a second and flipped out wide open. Man, that's a good one to start off with. Got to catch that ball. Whitford was the third-ranked Juco tight end nationally in 2020. Out of Monroe College. Four out wide for the Aggies are in second down and 10, just underway from Aggie Memorial. Big hold, big burst as well. This is Juwan Price. Boy, was he good in the spring, Danny. He, hey, Juwan turned it on, man. He had a great spring. You're absolutely right. Hit the hole hard there. Big closure on the secondary from UTEP that came down quick. You know, when he gets one move past that, he's into the second or third second or third level in a minute. So here it is here, one-on-one, -on -one, tough tackle to make, and they just barely grabbed him, knocked him down. Man, he was looking at green. Price got four. He ran for 165 in the spring finale against Dixie State. The Aggies rotating in running backs. Alex Escobar is now the running back to the right of Jonah Johnson, who's back to throw. Arn, second down and six. Check that third down and six, and the pass is incomplete. Over across the middle of the field. That's a tough pass right there in, in traffic across the middle. It's always a tough place to throw the ball. Hey, how big was that drop by, the, by Thomas on that tight end little out there that we had? You know, that had kept the ball going. But good confidence. It was a good, good series, Adam. They got down the field. Good punt now. We'll flip the fields, and let's see what the defense can do. So the Aggies will have to punt. Josh Carlson, 46 yards per punt in the two spring games. Former Division II All-American at Dixie State. Playing in his first fall game with the Aggies. Punts it away to Justin Garrett, and it will take a backspin bounce. They're going to say across the plane, though, and 
the Miners will have it at the 20-yard line. This UTEP squad, Danny, they're experienced. The Aggies have 40 newcomers, but UTEP brings back their entire starting offense and a good chunk of their defense as well. Yeah, that, that makes it hard because they have a lot of experience playing with each other already, right? So uh, coming into this, this season, that's an advantage they have. But here's what I want to say about some of those things. And us not playing for a long time, Adam, you know when that first kickoff happens and someone comes down there and punches you in the nose, not literally, but, you know, it's a physical game. Hey, it's game on. So, yes, they have a lot returning, but let's see what they can do. And it all doesn't matter. So everyone starts from zero tonight. You have an hardest in the second year starter at quarterback for UTEP. Their running back's a star. It's Deion Hankins, who is from El Paso. Hardison will throw on first down. He puts it in the air. Receiver wide open. That's Jacob Cowing. The secondary, Danny, that's the big question mark for the Aggies going into the season. You know, I talked to our secondary coach, Coach, coach Bell, and he was worried about Cowing. He was worried about six. He was worried about the speed that he could bring. And that's why it was on one of the keys. One of the keys was you got to be able to play man, and you got to be able to watch and find where he is. He comes out like a little cross-wheel route in there and he breaks down the sidelines. We got to keep our eye on him. We got a penalty though, it's bringing it back. Flag is down near the 20 where the line of scrimmage was. Once again, Kevin Brunette is our referee today. was a 49-yard connection that's negated all the way back to the 10. So it's going to be first down and 20, even though we never got an explanation from the referee. Here's Dion Hankins, and he's tackled in the backfield. Tackle for loss for the man we profiled during the open, Trevor Brohard. It's a loss Tre of two. Man, Trevor Brohard, in the open, we talked about how he's going to be flying around to the ball, and there he is right here. So come in to get him right here. You see him up on the line of scrimmage, shed the block, come across there, grab an ankle and pull him down. Trevor, he's healthy and he's going to be a good one in the middle. That brings up second down and 22 for Hardison in this UTEP offense. They averaged 23 points per game last season. Hardison from his own end zone, lofts it downfield and it's caught by Jacob Cowing. And he's taken down from behind by newcomer Torin Union. You know, Adam, this, is, this was a, a little bit of uh, what I was uh, worried about is trying to get someone in the secondary get behind us. You know, when you're in the secondary, you want to keep everything in front. Never let anyone behind you. And as you can see here, he had a little bit of time, steps up in the pocket, he throws that ball nice and deep. You get be he gets behind you at a safety. That should never happen. Big plays, that will ruin, ruin the, uh, it makes it tough. And it makes it tough when you get to the sidelines because coach is going to have your ear about that. 74-yard hookup between Hardison and Cowing. Hankins is still the running back. Hardison will change the play at the line of scrimmage. The man in motion was Forrest McKee, who's from Las Cruces. He's the fullback. And Hankins will rumble inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. Pickup of seven for Dion Hankins, who played his high school ball at Parkland in El Paso. He's the all-time leader in rushing yards in the city of El Paso. He's a tough, 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 tough. So up front there, look at that offensive line. He's getting the push on that defensive line. So from an Aggie perspective, you got to dig your heels in there. you got to have some gap integrity there and not let him get underneath you to push you back. Hankins will charge ahead. He bounces off a couple of defenders, and he's all the way down to the five-yard line. He's a tough guy to take down. He weighs in at 215. He's a tough one at 215. You're right, Adam. So when you come flying up, so we had a couple of defenders uh, safety. You think we have Bell coming in here flying in. And you can see him coming up, and you want to pop him. But at as strong of running backs they are, if you just try to put a shoulder in him, he's just going to keep running. That's exactly what happened. you got to drag him down. Nine rushing touchdowns a season ago for Hankins. They give his right back to him. He stays on his feet, and he bulldozes into the end zone. Dion Hankins puts the Miners ahead to start the 2021 season.
you know, that's a, that's they're, they're dominating up front, so you get a nice big hole in there. He puts his head down there, and he picks up four or five yards. But, you know, that big series right there, it's all set up on that big pass play because what happens is defensively you get tired, and after that big play you've got your gasping for air, and you're trying to run back there. And so it makes it tough, but that was a, a good deep ball and uh, put us on our heels. Point after is good from Gavin Beckley. Last season, Deion Hankins was second nationally in rushing touchdowns for a freshman. He is alone from El Paso's Parkland High School. The Battle of I-10 begins with a Miners touchdown. That was a big deal for the Yankees, both in 2018 and 2019. Got to find a way to avoid those defensively. Oh, it, it's that big, big, deep ball that really hurt us there. So, uh, absolutely. But we knew they were going to score. So now, composure. Let's get back. Let's get back to moving the ball down the field and get some points on the board. Jonah Johnson did look pretty composed in that first series, albeit the Yankees had a punt. But overall, if Whitford makes that catch yeah. on that short toss, yeah. who knows what happens? Yeah, and he was he was wide open there. It was a good call. He was out there, and it's just one of those things where you just started running before you had time to catch the ball. And so, see if he can't put something together again. The Aggie offensive line is experienced. Sage Jockstatter making his. 38th career start at left tackle. Eli Johnson's a newcomer from Ole Miss. He'll snap the football here to Jonah Johnson in a moment. So this is an old experience group for the Aggies on the offensive line. Quarterback draw for Johnson who can run. He's almost 240 pounds, but he can really run with the football. It's loose on the turf. Miners are saying they have it. The officials trying to move the scrum. It was going to be positive yardage for Johnson, who had some open space, but the football was poked away, and the Miners do recover. Yeah, that's a, that's a draw all day long. Wide open, good call coming in there. I think Jonah was looking downfield. He didn't have that ball tucked in there like nice and tight, and so a safety came across the middle and popped that thing out of there. He was wide open. Those are the tough ones. That was one of the other keys, taking care of the football. Uh, these are going to happen. Now the defense has got to get back out there and dig their heels in and try to hold on. So uh, it's a tough spot to put the Aggies in to begin the game. I don't think Doug Martin has preached anything more the last three years than taking care of the football, not committing turnovers. It really hurt the Aggies in their last fall season in 2019. Miners ran the ball well on their first series with Hankins. They do have four running backs they can use, but they're going to stay with Deion Hankins. Aggies trying to strip it away. Chris Ojo was in there, the newcomer from Eastern Washington. A handful picked up by Hankins on the first down carry. Yeah, I'm anxious to see what Chris uh, Ojo can do. You know, he's uh, a very talented guy coming in from Eastern Michigan. So we could really use it on the defensive side of the ball here. See everyone hat on hat. Everyone came in there. So nice, nice uh, defense to hold on and, and hold them to just uh, four or five yards. Zach Fryer is the tight end wing left. New running back for the Miners. It is Ronald Awad. They will use four. Hankins, Awad, Quadres Wadley, and Willie Eldridge could all see some action tonight. Man, they got a bunch of running backs they could go to, right? So it's like next man up, here we go. Oh, that's tough. And when they get some good blocking up front, um, it's, even, it's even tougher when you get some guys back there that are talented. Well, it's a good defensive stand right there. Trevor Bohard comes in there, trips them up, holds them down there. Puts them into a third down position, so let's see if they can't really dig their heels in here, put a little pressure on them, and get out of here with uh, just a field goal attempt. Miners were good on third down in 2020, converting on 44%. Third down in short, hardest in throws, incomplete, almost intercepted, intended for their star wideout, Justin Garrett. Justin Garrett comes across on that little slant in there. That is a very tough play to defend because if you got your back to the safety as you see right there all you got to do is pull that thing in there it's a little bit behind him so we'll take the break for the Aggies perspective and here we go and if you saw it there as Garrett was walking off he wears the nameplate of former Miners tight end Luke Laufenberg who passed away in 2019 after a lengthy battle with cancer that's why Garrett wears the number two and he also wears the nameplate on his back. We'll talk about that as we go along during the course of the game here tonight. 
Field goal is good for Gavin Beckley. Miners ahead 10-0. Good start for UTEP on the road in the Battle of I-10. For more on the Aggie quarterback, Jonah Johnson, we send it down to Stephanie Shields. That's right, you guys were talking about Jonah Johnson a little bit earlier, and you know what, He all eyes were on the quarterback position coming into tonight. Jonah Johnson is a transfer from Fresno City College, and he did get to appear in the two Aggie spring games last season where he completed 36 of 60 passes in the spring for 358 yards and a touchdown. Now he's also an adept runner for a net worth of 64 yards and a pair of scores. Now, ahead of this season, Jonah did say Aggie fans will get to see the real him and he was going to put everything on the table so hopefully we'll see some of that tonight adam danny back to you thank you stephanie all sideline reports are brought to you by memorial medical center the official health care partner of aggie athletics miners will kick off to the aggies remember to juan price had a kick return touchdown in the spring of 94 yards. The Aggies are hoping he can be just as dangerous as Jason Huntley was, who's now with the Philadelphia Eagles in the NFL. And this one will not be returnable over the head of Price. So here comes Jonah Johnson again, Danny. We'll see what he can do on his third series. You know, the toughest thing for a quarterback to do, and maybe it's like a pitcher in baseball, Adam, I don't know, but when you get to, you got to go back out there, right? So things aren't going to always go great, but when they uh, don't, you have to put that behind you and step forward because you're on to the next task. So his next task is he's got to get his team, put confidence back in there, and put a drive together and get some points on the board. Only one carry so far for Samuels. Only two carries total for the Aggies. That includes the Johnson run that resulted in a fumble. Dominic Jacinto in motion. Young man who transferred in from Mizzou. Front side pressure. Pass is caught. Juwan Price. Flag is down as Price pinballs his way up near the 35. They'll mark him down to the 33 after picking up eight. Defense number 23. 15 Again, he just pops one right out of the backfield, kind of a little, get it out in the flats, get the ball to Price in the open and let him run the ball. You, you know, lots of pressure up front. You got four men, you, you got to draw another one in there. And so this will push the ball all the way near midfield up to the 48 yard line, Danny. New Mexico State can take all of that that they uh, can get, right? Any breaks that you can to put it together, and you got to keep moving. Pistol back, Samuels. He's in motion left. Johnson throws it across the middle. Triple coverage. Wow. Intended for Garcia yeah. Castaneda. I think that was batted away by K-State transfer Walter Neal. Oh, he's, he's a good one, too, so that's going to help that defense back there. A little surprised that he decided to throw that one across the middle because there were lots of coverage there. You three, see three people right across the middle there. A little crossing route in there. It's a tough one to complete. Second down and 10, just shy of midfield. The Aggies trailing early, 10-0. New defensive alignment this year for the Miners, going with four down linemen, two linebackers with their first-year defensive coordinator, Bradley Dale Pivido. Johnson will tuck it a little more this time. He's a big boy as a flag comes in along the near sideline. The helmet was ripped off the head of Robert Downs III on the near side. I didn't see what happened there. I just looked down, and Robert was out without his helmet there. That's a... That's a tough one right there, especially when it's away from the ball. Personal foul, hands to the face, defense number 15. The 15 yard penalty to the Aggies. It's only after mentioned Walter Neal. We were just praising him, and now he commits a huge penalty, the second big one on this drive for the Miners defensively. Yeah, the interesting thing, too, is, is that um, uh, on that last read, Jonah kept the ball, and it was the right read, too. So pick up some extra yards in there. So it's interesting what they're going to do. They're going to put some pressure. They're going to play some man and really try to put some pressure on Jonah to make some plays. Aggies down to the 32. Deep back in the pistol look, Samuels. Transfer from Michigan. Option, Johnson will fake the pitch. Crawls down to the 30. He picks up two. 
looked like a pretty good decision initially, but the miner is able to sniff it out. Yeah, that closed in a hurry. There was an open in there. He did see that there was someone could be on the pitch. He tried to fake that pitch and take it in there. Great idea, but man, that uh, hole opened and it closed in a flash. Alex Escobar will rotate in in the backfield for the Aggies. He's the new running back. The Aggies will use Samuels, Price, and Escobar, maybe even freshman Lorenzo McMillan. Johnson back to throw. Near side, out route, it's caught. Isaiah Garcia, Castaneda, first down and then a couple more. So UTEP decides to bring a safety blitz. They bring a blitz in the middle there. Eli, our, our transfer center in their grad transfer, very smart guy. He's calling that offensive line. He's the quarterback on the line. The line picks up the, the blitzer and gets the ball out there for a completion. Great play. Danny Eli Johnson is one of the brightest young men any sport I've had the pleasure of talking to. He's been great already on and off the field for the Aggies. He's out of Taylor, Mississippi, and he started every single game back in 2019 at Ole Miss in the SEC. Samuels trying to bounce it to the edge. Flag does come in. That's only the second carry for the Michigan transfer so far in the game. Holding. Offense number 76. Tim Young's penalty remains first down. That's holding our Dotstad, are making his 38th career start at left tackle. Yeah, that's a tough one right there. You know, Sage, Sage Dockstadter right there, he got drafted by uh, Canadian Football League, but decided, hey, I'm coming back. You know, I have some unfinished business to take care of for New Mexico State, and I can appreciate that, although. I don't think that was the business he was talking about, but he is a, he's a good one, and he's going to do quite well at the next level. So that pushes the Aggies back. First down and 20. Run pass option. Pass is whistled far side. Good tumbling coverage by a veteran, Josh Caldwell. Redshirt senior, fourth year with Utah. It's Warner out there on that on that pass play, and so that was a t long one. It took a long time. So look how long this is to develop this play. So we have some good blocking up there, and they just have great defense. They're all over him. He that is covered. If that is the epitome of the word covered on a pass play right there, not much you can do. Secondary is old in experience for fourth year head coach Dana Dimmel, Caldwell and Neal the corners, Prince and Inyang the two safeties in this. Defensive group for UTEP. Quarterback draw again. Johnson dancing around the defense. Spins off a tackle, stays on his feet. And he gets down near the 20, but the Aggies will still have third down and 12 upcoming. Hey, great play, great decision right there. So it's wide open, right? It's all up in there. That's quarterback draw. That's the second one they called. Let's see if he's taking care of that football in his hand. Look at that second hand coming across there on the football. He's making sure he's taking care of it this time. Sometimes when you get as much as you can at him, I think it's a good time to just say, let's just go down right there, right? Don't, don't try to put, it's the extra yard there. It always seems that someone comes up hurt. Johnson, a big dude, six foot three, 238 pound quarterback out of Madeira, California. On a third and long, he's gonna run it again. Runs in front of his center, Eli Johnson, almost ran him over. And that'll set up a field goal try after a keeper of two for Jonah Johnson. Yeah, you know, that was an interesting play because we had three guys in the, in the, uh, in the, in the routes running routes out there, but it didn't really look like that there was anyone open and it doesn't look like they were going really hard or something. I'm not sure what that play was to, that just maybe slowed to develop and that's why he decided to eat it. Thirty-eight yard field goal try for Ethan Albertson, redshirt sophomore from San Diego. He was four for four in the spring. And he is off the upright and no good. Well, his long in the spring was only 35, so that would have been his longest as an Aggie. He can't connect. Ball back to the minors with the Aggies trailing 10 zip. Right now, the Aggies with 50 yards of offense. Danny, 97 
for UTEP, but more importantly for the Miners, over 12 yards per play so far. Yeah, you know, and if you look at that, if you kind of break it down even further, they had that one huge pass play that we got behind our free safety. That cost us a big deal. Offensively, we're moving the ball. Uh, we just missed a field goal there. All the things that possibly could go wrong, maybe went wrong in this first part of the first quarter. Hey, but you still got it. You're still in there, right? So it's still only 10 nothing. So lots of time, lots of football left. You got to collect yourself and put it back together and make a stop here on defense. The Aggies have won three straight against the Miners. The last four game win streak in the rivalry was 92 through 95. The Aggies haven't won five in a row since the early 1920s. Gavin Hardison, who's looked good so far, is back at quarterback for UTEP. He's out of Hobbs, New Mexico. Transfer from New Mexico military in Roswell, and he completes the pass to Garrett, who's across midfield into Aggie territory. Another big catch and run for the Miners. You know, um, we're out there playing man, and when I talked to Coach Bell, the secondary coach from Mexico State, he said, you know, the thing about uh, secondary is that when you make a mistake, everybody sees it. Here you clearly see that there's a mistake being made that you let the guy, DJ, just let the guy get to his inside and continue on. He, there's no help for him there. But more importantly, you can't let those big plays get to us because that's what really kills the defense. 36-yard connection. Big plays for Cowing and Garrett, two guys who accounted for 72% of the Miners receiving yards last season. This is Ronald Awat at running back. Redshirt Jr. from Lubbock. He only gains two. Flag is in, though. I guess that was All strange, right. yeah. Looks like they picked it up, so it's second down and eight. Awa trying to bounce it to the outside. And he's going to be well short, so third down and mid coming up for the Miners with under four left here in quarter one. Yeah, I think they're trying to just get to the edge there. So, again, we took an inside release, and when someone's trying to get to the in outside, and you take an inside release, as Chris Ojo did there, it puts a, it puts a, a big position for you because now you're chasing from behind. Miners hill for one and third down. They were 44%, a good percentage during their three and five season in 2020. They did play in the fall. The Aggies did not. First fall game for the Aggies since 2019. Hardison gives it to Hankins. He's trying to muscle to the yardage needed. And Danny, he's in a fall a yard short. It was a host of Aggies leading the charge, including Trevor Brohar. Yeah, that's a tough one right there. We had lots of support. So clearly they were just going to say, look, I'm dominating the line of scrimmage. Let's just push it in there and we'll just go three yards in a cloud of dust. Unfortunately, lots of Aggies to the ball, as you can see it right there. We got about five or six hats on the ball. Didn't get it. First man there might have been Kayla Mills, the tall former wide receiver who has made the transition to the secondary. Miners going for it on fourth down, trying to push the pile. Trevor Brohard either trying to say the Aggies have the football or it's a turnover on downs, probably just saying it's a turnover on downs. Aggies motioning that way, saying they got the stop here. <laughs> and they will give it to Utah. Was that was that a rugby scrum right there? Pushing from the back. You can do that. So you can push him in there. So I think he got that first big push in there that really mattered the most and picked up that first down. That was Gavin Hardison on the keeper, by the way. Never did give the football up to the running back, Hankins. Hankins, the tailback here. And Gavin Hardison needs to use a timeout. The Miners do have a first-year offensive coordinator. That's Dave Warner, who's in El Paso now after spending 13 years at Michigan State. Over 100 passing yards already for Gavin Hardison, a transfer from NIMI, New Mexico Military Institute. Started seven games last year for the Miners. His second year as a starter. It wasn't a good snap. He still gives it off, though. A. Watts into the end zone for UTEP. Flags fly in the end zone. 
The fourth rushing touchdown in two years for Ronald A. Watts. Man, do they have a corral full of running backs? They can give it to a lot of them there, and it sure helps when you got good blocking up front there as well. But, uh, you know, he, they, he also turned it on. He got into that, to that third level there in the secondary. So there he is right there. We're going to give it to him right crossing the, the – we missed a tackle right there. That really cost us a little bit there. Chris Ojo on missed tackle there. But he's still broken into the secondary, and I think that's the penalty they're going to call right there. we got a fistful of face mask. But, man, he turned it on. He, got, he pushed that right into the end zone. Yeah, Caleb Mills will be the guilty party. Personal foul, face mask, defense number 12. The 15-yard penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. They'll enforce that on the kickoff. And Beckley comes in for the point after for the Miners. This UTEP offense is humming right now. All 11 starters back from 2020. Really experienced offensive line, 99 combined career starts on the O-line coming in. The point after from Beckley. And the Miners tack on. All UTEP early. Another big play, Danny. This one, a 34-yard touchdown run for Ronald Awad. Too many explosion plays here in the first quarter in the first game of the season. It is, and, and so you see uh, Coach Sukup right there, which um, he's, he's a tough one, man, and he expects a lot from his guys. So even though he says, Trevor, he's our leader, he, he's on him. But it's also not only Trevor. You see Trevor in the middle there that he was flowing. Maybe he was talking about right there where he created, he stepped out of the way too much. But we also miss a tackle right there at the point of attack. And you cannot miss those tackles because these running backs are very good. And you can't just put one arm out there. You've got to put, bring the guy down. Miners went for it on fourth and one during that series. Gavin Hardison and the quarterback sneak able to get the yardage needed. And then the touchdown run for Awat. So it's been Hankins, Awat. We haven't seen Wadley or Eldridge yet, but they're in the stable as well for fourth year head coach Dana Dimmel. Miners trying to snap a three game losing streak in the rivalry. Remember that penalty was enforced on the kickoff. So an easy boot through the end zone for Beckley. And the Yankees, Danny, find themselves in a big hole. Now, Doug Martin has said he probably will play two quarterbacks today, but they're going to stick with Jonah Johnson for now, late in the first quarter. Now, I think Jonah's taking the ball down, right? So he's had some good drives. We, we kind of fell short on one drive, but he was down there. We had a field goal attempt that it didn't get completed. So I think offensively, we're moving the ball. Defensively, we're giving up too many quick, big plays that's really causing this, pl this problem. So now... You got to get on the board because if you get too far down, all you have to do is come back. You're just going to have to throw the ball to make up ground. Garcia Castaneda was in motion. Johnson back to throw. He swings it out for Samuels, his second catch of the day. And a big hit. It's going to be a late hit out of bounds after the pickup of 10. You can add some yardage to it. That was linebacker Breon Hayward who came in late. Boy, Hayward was bringing it though, wasn't he? He was coming and someone was going to take a lick in and boy, did he, did he give it one there. Fortunately, it cost him a few yards. Still, Adam, I'm looking downfield. I'm looking for a ball that they can really release downfield and everyone's covered. You can see the coverage down there um, on the, de on the uh, defensive side for UTEP and that's why he's dumping that out to the flats. So that pushes the football all the way up to the 46 yard line. Running back, Juwan Price, the redshirt freshman from Peoria, Arizona. They fake it to him. Johnson, pressure from the back, and he's taken down from the back. Jadrian Taylor, Jr. from Lufkin, Texas. Yeah, that's, just a pressure, that's a pressure takedown right there, Adam. We have four guys out in patterns. No one is open. Everyone is covered. He's trying to buy time so someone can get open and he just can't hang on for that long and pulls him down from behind. Glad he's taking care of that football, though. Loss of one. It is a sack for Taylor in his second year in the Miners program after transferring in from Kilgore College. Johnson will loft it oh. downfield. He had a receiver. It was Dominic Jacinto. 
and he couldn't snag it. The transfer from Mizzou. Oh, that'd be the right guy to get the ball to, right? He's got some wheels. He can turn it on. He was wide open. It was just a little bit far. You know, a lot of times it's like, get the ball to him. If you put your hand on the ball, catch the ball. That one, I don't know, Adam. I don't think he could have grabbed that one. It was just too far out in front. But I like that we're throwing the ball down the field. Puts us in a third and long position, but we're going to have to start doing some of that to make up some ground here. Third and 11. Four receivers set. It's Jared Wyatt, Andrea Sinto, top side of your screen. Downs the third and Warner on the right side. Pass is caught. Jacinto. So Johnson goes right back to the Missouri Tigers transfer in the Yankees pick up a first down. That's a tough one too. A little in route there and he, a lot of guys hanging all over him and he still hangs on to the football, picks up that first down. It's a gutsy throw right across the middle and he's getting pressure too. So you can kind of feel the pressure there. We didn't hold him as much up front there. Had to get the ball out under pressure and makes a good pass. Gain of 15, the first time tonight the Yankees have converted on a third down. 20 seconds left here in the first quarter. Aggies trying to get on the scoreboard for the first time today. A lot of contact, and that's going to be pass interference. Intended for Jared Wyatt, a little too much body for Richmond, California native Tyreek James. You know, Jonah's got a big arm. We talked about how he can do it, and he was out there. It was one-on-one, -on -one, so he knew he got caught for it right there. But here it is here. You set it up. And he still had to get the ball out under pressure, and it just crawled all over him. Couldn't make a play on the ball. Two fouls on the play. Pass interference, defense. Jared White three. gets behind the defenders. Surprise. Those are the things that Personal really foul. hurt. Roughing the passer, defense number 11. 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. So it's pass interference on James, roughing the passer on Taylor. I was looking downfield. I didn't even see that they I roughed it. Poor, poor Jonah. We're already like, okay, fine. He threw the ball. Let's get down. Let's see what's happening downfield. He must have taken a lick. Aggies trying to finish off this tough first quarter in Hino. They're at the 25, 12 ticks left. Running back, Samuels. Samuels, big hole. Stiff arms, James. Down to the 15. They're going to roll him back to the 20, but forward progress was up to the 15 with only three seconds left here in the quarter. Yeah, I think Samuels can really be an asset for us there. He's a big, strong running back, and I, I've just been waiting for him to get the ball and just run right past or right over someone because he is a specimen. Nice big hole to run into there. Omari Samuels runs it down to the 15. That's where the Yankees will start when we start quarter number two. Coming your way next. Jonah Johnson still in at quarterback. He is 5 for 11 for 51 yards so far. He's also run the ball six times. Only two carries for Omari Samuels, who's the pistol back here. From the 15-yard line on first down and 10. Garcia Castaneda in motion. Three receivers were all to the right side. Dump off into the end zone, and it's caught by Dominic Jacinto. Let's see, here we are right here. He got a little bootleg out there. He's, he's open, he has him. He's got to get, remember, one foot in in college. Let's see if he can do it. Catch the ball, first things first. I think he got the foot down. Was that heel touching, though, Adam? Danny. I thought he had a foot down. I was waiting to say touchdown because they initially never signaled. They right. never did. Right. I thought he had a foot in. I really did. Well thrown ball, wafted well by Jonah Johnson. Prior to the timeout being Let's called, take a look here. Here's the boot. The previous play of a touch incomplete pass is under review. That's a toe right there. I think so. I think you're right, Adam. So we'll see if this one is reversed. You need enough evidence to overturn it. The call on the field is incomplete. Jacinto came in from Missouri. He's from Kansas City, 2018 at Mizzou. He had two touchdown catches in the SEC. So this is a guy, Danny, 
who comes in with a lot of Power 5 experience, similar to Tony Nicholson, who came in from Baylor in 2019. Right. I like the play call because it was everyone up. They had five guys on the line of scrimmage. So you have Amari Samuel. Amari Samuel has just ran the ball great. So he runs a boot. He comes out here. Here's the end of the play after the boot pass up high, catch the ball at the highest point and get one foot in. Adam, I think you called it. That's a, that's a good look right there. You're one for one. Part of the reason too, Danny, is it looks like the heel is in the air when he gets his toe down. I think he caught it with his toe on the turf, not his heel yeah. right here. Yeah, so that's a touchdown right there before he sets it down is what you're saying. I, I agree. But once again, the call on the field is incomplete. So they need enough evidence to say, yeah, it's a catch and we can change it. They need enough evidence to do so. And this, of course, goes without saying, this is a huge play in this game, even though it's early. Here's the call. After review, the ruling on the field stands. It's an incomplete pass, second down. Okay, take away all my kudos for you, Adam. That wasn't good. You're zero for one then, bud. I, I just think there wasn't I think so too. enough evidence to change it. Well, it might have been a catch, but yeah. the call in the field is incomplete. Yeah. Need enough evidence yeah. to change it. Yeah. Okay, you got to put it behind you. Good play call right there. Coach Martin's calling some really good plays. I like him. Let's see what else he can dial up here to get on the board. Pistol back Samuels, two carries, 14 yards, long of 10 for him so far. Receiver bottom side is Downs the third. Top returning receiver from 2019. He hasn't been targeted yet. Option pitch to Samuels. And he is swarmed down from behind by big defensive tackle, Kelton Moss. Yeah, that's tough. You have five guys on the line of scrimmage. You got backers flowing. They they were waiting for him on Samuels. Got someone, got a little banged up there. But let's see, you got five guys down. See how the backers and everyone is flowing to the ball? Kind of missed maybe a block or two, but they had lots of hats to the ball. There wasn't much going there. I'm glad he was able to cut it back and pick up whatever he could. Adrian Taylor is heading off the field in some pain right now, looks like, for UTEP. And we'll take a break. The Aggies driving, trailing the Miners 17-0. From Young, Danny Nee, Stephanie Shields with you from Aggie Memorial. First home game for the Aggies in 644 days. And tonight's Hispanic Heritage game is presented by Coors Light and brought to you in part by financial services partner, Nusenda Credit Union and the Las Cruces Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. This has been a long drive for Doug Martin's offense so far, Danny. Yeah, he's really marshaled one, a good drive all the way down the field. And on that one pass play, I thought for sure that was going to be a, a TD. So let's see what he can call here on the third down to either get the first down or pick up the TD. Line to gain is the five-yard line. Pretty good protection. Now Johnson will run. He needs the five-yard line, and he's going to be short by a couple of yards. He only got six. He needed ten. Everyone's covered, so he got lots of lots of good coverage in the secondary for UTEP. So he spills out, trying to pick up whatever we can, and uh, wasn't going to get more than that. So he might as well take that out of bounds and set up a field goal attempt again. This one from 27, Ethan Albertson hit the upright from 38 earlier. Out of the hold of punter Josh Carlson. Long snapper is Austin Reeves, the Virginia Tech transfer. And Albertson puts the Aggies on the scoreboard for the first time in 2021. You wanted a touchdown there, Danny, but you'll settle for three. Well, you got to get points, right? So the first thing is, yes, I wanted a touchdown, and I think all Aggie fans did. But you're, you're right, Adam, that the first thing is get points on the board. You have to start converting some of these opportunities into points. So you get three here. So then from there, I think you got to hope that your D makes some adjustments and they dig their heels in and come up with a stop or two. Third member of our crew is Stephanie Shields, and we head down to the sidelines to check in with her. Stephanie. 
Right, and I'm Danny. Now it is the Aggies are celebrating Hispanic Heritage Day today. Before this, with the big fan fiesta, there was a luchador wrestling match. Much mariachi bands, live DJ, all the works, and that's just the perfect thing here for the borderland with all the Hispanic heritage we have here in Las Cruces and of course in El Paso as well for the Battle of I-10. Now this is such a great environment for this celebration. So we'll keep that energy up. Adam, Danny, back to you. Thank you, Stephanie. All sideline reports are brought to you by Memorial Medical Center. It was a packed tailgate area earlier, Danny. I, I was amazed how many RVs were out there, how many folks were tailgating. It's been a while since the Aggies have been able to have a home game, so that was good to see. And you know, the, the when we play UTEP, no matter what is going on, it's always a time where people come down from UTEP and they have great tailgating, lots of activities, like to see it. Like to see us play a little closer here in this second quarter. 69 rushing yards so far for UTEP. 108 through the air for quarterback Gavin Hardison. Fullback Forrest McKee, who's from Las Cruces, was in motion. Here is Hankins. He shimmies through a hole. He's into the third level. And he's sent out of bounds by Dalton Bulls, who's a safety for the Aggies. So he got to the third level, a gain of 19 for Hankins. Yeah, Hankins is a good one. He got to the third level in a hurry there, and so Bulls really had to make a, a play coming in here strong from the secondary. But let's see how he gets there, right? So big hole up front. He pins our linebackers in. You can see it by pinning those linebackers to the left there. They create this big crease gap that was just a nice big hole, and you don't want to give that guy too many of those to run through. 139 rushing yards per game in 2020 for UTEP. Hankins had a lot of those. He ran for 84 plus per game a season ago. The Yagi's able to stop the run here. Donovan King, defensive lineman, makes the stop on backup running back Ronald Awat, who only gets three. Yeah, so he brings Brohard, he brings uh, uh, Donovan King over there to hold his ground in there. So you see Trevor right in the middle putting the pressure on there. And you want to string that all the way down there, nothing happening. So that's a good first play for the Ags. A watch, still the running back. Hardison belted as he throws, and it's intercepted. Intercepted by Dalton Bulls, the young man from Roswell, New Mexico. So big pressure on the quarterback. You bring. We bring pressure from both sides and actually got to the quarterback. So you see the pressure coming from the bottom, but also the top up there. He beats a block. He actually is the one who actually put the hit on the quarterback. Everyone was thinking, oh, that's going to be a penalty there. It wasn't. It was a good hit. And he just tossed that ball in the air. Bowles goes up, makes a play. That's what you need to do. Don't sit back. Go to the ball. And he does. And yes, you do. You celebrate. That's a good one. Danny Bowles came to the Aggies as a linebacker, but during camp, due to the thinness in the secondary, he had to transition to safety and he's been really, really good. Yeah, Coach uh, Coach Bell, the secondary coach there is very big on him as well, so it's a good addition to the back there. In addition to playing good coverage for uh, pickoffs, he can also put the lick to you. He can hit you hard. And was also the first game for Bulls here tonight because he did not play in the spring. Home run oh, ball for him. Johnson. He he's has Garcia him. Castaneda. Makes a man slip. Isaiah Garcia Castaneda. Touchdown, oh. Aggies. Oh, we got a flag down. Oh, goodness, Adam. I'm not sure what the flag is. It's in the area where they have a hold. But Isaiah got behind him. Let's see what he has. An eligible player downfield. Offense number 76. A penalty remains first down. That ineligible player is Sage Dockstatter, the Aggie left tackle. I didn't see it. Mm. Of course, I have to be honest and say I was looking downfield the whole time, thinking there he is. He's open. He's open. He beat the secondary. He's open, and he got the ball to him. That's a tough call right there. Well, if you were wondering about the arm of Jonah Johnson, he just showcased it right there. So let's just look at it anyway. I know we got a penalty, it's called back, but let's see the arm of there. He steps up, he's gonna take a hit, and he does, but he gets that ball downfield there. Great move. Gotta do it again, though. 
Praise Amahule with the pressure, dump off. Caught by Jawan Price, who hurdles the defender. Davion Inyang, and might have got a couple more on the hurdle. I think that just says you got a little, little, um, little momentum. You got a little agility. You got a little momentum happening your way. So we're going to dump this off. You let him in there, put him in there. Let's see if he can get over top. Oh, man, he almost did. Got a toe. Oh, yeah, the juices are flowing now. Here we go. 12-yard pickup, second down and three. Now running the football is Price in a big play on the defensive line. Led by linebacker Tyrese Knight, who came up from his linebacker position. Man, that was a wall. He ran into a wall there. So, you know, he, he came into that hole, filled that hole, and not a one more inch was made there. Aggies need the 44 third and one for Jonah Johnson in this offense. Design keeper trying to navigate his way to the first down. He does. Forward progress, Danny, up to the 45. He gets two. He only needed one. Yeah, he, he needed those, and so I wasn't sure if he was going to get there. I think sometimes I'd like to see if he knows where he's got to get two or three yards to go get it. I mean, go stick your head down in there and pick up. A, it's easy for me to say from up here, right? But man, you get, need that first down to keep this momentum happening. Timeout, New Mexico State, their first. All right, full so the out. Aggies will call a full timeout with 10 and change left here in quarter number two in their first home game since November 23rd, 2019. It kind of feels normal, doesn't it, Danny? It does. It's getting back. And you know, the nice thing is, too, Adam, is that if you look at the stadium, we got a good turnout, got lots of people having lots of fun at the tailgates. That always makes it a good time. I got to spend some extra time with some of the Ag former Aggie players that joined us in Las Cruces this, this zero week, right? So before a lot of other activities happened, they all came back, wanted to see what the Aggies were all about. And man, it was good to see him, and it's good to get back to football. Jonah Johnson, six for 13, 62 yards. He does have one fumble. What have you seen so far, Danny? Well, here's what I here's what I've seen. So you got to take care of the football. I think we already got over that hump. But wh what I have seen is that he's not afraid to throw that deep ball, and he's got an arm that can do it. He can also run the ball. So coaches had some really great plays where they're balancing the run and pass. Let's see what he can do here. 40 yards on the ground so far for the Aggies. Johnson is hit as he throws, and it skips in front of safety Justin Prince. This defensive line for the Miners is That's really tough. good, led yeah. by Praise Amahuli, the retro sophomore DN. Yeah, I, I'm not sure if that was a Sage, Sage's size there. You see it at the bottom of the screen. I think that was Sage Oxetter that got around him there. Quick first step, got around him. There was nothing happening there. It's a good thing he didn't get that ball picked off, but he was about to air that thing mm -hmm. out, wasn't he? That was Daylon Williams with the pressure at his third different school, UT Martin FCS, and also Independence Community College. Intentional grounding, offense. The ball be placed at the spot of the foul. The down counts. Mm. Doug Martin was racing over to speak to one of the officials as the call was being made. Jonah Johnson seems confused as he speaks to the umpire. Nonetheless, it'll well, push the Aggies back, and it's going to bring up second down and 20. That, that makes it really tough, right? Now, so now you're second and 20. Certainly, you don't have to go for it all, but you've got to make a big chunk here so you can have an, a, an attempt at a, a third and decent yardage. Miners, of course, thinking pass. It will be a pass. Lob downfield, and it is incomplete. That was through the hands of Robert Downs the third. That was perfectly thrown. Oh man, that's it's a tough it's a tough pass to catch right there, right? So you're sprinting, you're looking back, and it's coming right down the chimney to you. It it's a ball that you've got to catch though. So he gives it everything. He did get behind him. Mm. I don't know, Adam. Put two hands on the ball. I, I say you got to catch it. Danny, it's like a center fielder who's trying to chase down a fly ball yep. that's deep with yep. the back to the infield. It's tough. You're right. Tough catch, but certainly a catchable ball for Downs the third, who's the top returning wide receiver. 
Aggies are two of five on a third down. Johnson will toss it downfield. This one not catchable. Looking for Dodge City Community College transfer Terrell Warner. Yeah, so I think that penalty really hurt us right back there and put us in a situation where he had, had to try to get some big plays happening there. And so now, got to punt the ball, get it away, and uh, hope your defense can give you another shot before you go into halftime here. We'll have a couple more shots here before halftime. Josh Carlson will try to flip field position as he punts it away to wide receiver Justin Garrett, who's a dangerous return man for the Miners. Miners led 17-0. The Aggies with a made field goal and, and a drive that just stalled moments ago. Flag is down on the near side. Rugby-style punt. A good one oh, for man. Carlson. The Aggies will down it inside the five-yard line. But we'll see what the flag is all about on the near side. It's a nice roll he get right there. Devlin Kirkland was down there to touch it. One of the Aggies' safeties. 63-yard punt as it stands right now for Carlson, who had a great spring. Once again, our referee is Kevin Brunette. He's been a busy man here in the first half in the first game of the season. Illegal formation, kicking team, five players in the backfield, five-yard penalty, replay fourth down. So the Aggies will have to punt it again, and that 63-yard boomer is no more for Carlson. Let's see if he can do it again. A couple of these key penalties in the second quarter are really starting to uh, hurt a little bit, put you in a, a position, but let's see if he can't kick another one in there and get a nice roll to it. Five penalties of the Miners for the Aggies so far in the first half. Early on in quarter two, there's a look at Ronnie Pence, who's the special teams coach. And he'll send Carlson back out. Aggies looking for their fourth straight win against the Miners. The last Miner win in the rivalry was in 2016, when current Green Bay Packer Aaron Jones ran for 249, and the Aggies had a player running off the field. 12 players in formation. Kick a team, five yard penalty, remains fourth down. Yeah, Terrell Warner was racing off the field and he did not get off the field in enough time. So now the Yagi's really putting Carlson in a tough spot. He has Garrett backpedaling, and it takes a good UTEP bounce before it's snagged by linebacker Taylor Milton in punt coverage. First, Keegan, timeout. So it's good field position for the Miners after a 39-yard boot for Carlson. Glad you could join us tonight on Hispanic Heritage Day. It's presented by Coors Light. Also brought to you in part by financial services partner, Nusenda Credit Union and the Las Cruces Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. Adam Young, Danny Nee, Stephanie Shields on hand. The Yagis playing their first full game since 2019. The Miners did have a fall season in 2020. They struggled to get games in down the stretch. Three of their final four scheduled games in 2020 were canceled because of COVID, but they did go three and five and started 2023 and one. And they've looked really good in some stretches so far. Gavin Hardison is their quarterback, cowing in motion. Big plays from cowing and Garrett receiving, and we get another penalty flag. Ball start, offense, number 73. Five yard remains first down. That's our four-year starter, left guard Bobby DeHaro, three-time all-conference in the CUSA. He's from El Paso, Montwood High School. 
A little rusty on both sides, Danny. A little bit. Every single starter and offense back this year for the Miners, and that is a one-handed wow. fantastic snag by Cowing, who has put on a first-half show. He has. That's a, that's a tough ball to bring down in there, one-handed, in coverage. So there was people all around him. Sets up in there. Aggies have good defensive coverage. They just got to go make a play on it now. But let's mm. look at that. Oh, man, he tipped it to himself. That's something right there. Aggie shows some pressure from that linebacker spot where Joshua Ferguson is now backpedaling back to his linebacker position. Artisan will throw, caught, flag comes in, Cowing receives it, dragged down by newcomer DJ McCullough. Jacob Cowing from Maricopa, Arizona. Team best 41 catches in 2020 for UTEP. Holding, defense number seven. The penalty was, is declined. Result of the play is a first down. So McCullough is called for holding, but Cowing still manages to catch it. Yeah, yeah, that's tough right there. So quick outside here. You know, when I was talking to Coach Bell, and uh, he said, you know, there's one guy that we really have to make sure we know where he is at all times, and it's that man right there that made that catch, and then the one right after that. That would be a good one, because he is having one heck of a game. Great speed, great hands. We've got to find him. Hankins still the tailback. And the give is to Dion Hankins. Good play there near the line of scrimmage by Ferguson. That is not Javon Ferguson, who had a whale of a career for the Yankees. It's a new Ferguson, no relation. It's Joshua Ferguson. Joshua Ferguson pinches down on that and makes a big hit, and that's what we need a little bit more of right there, right? So it's going to shut down that run, and um, they're just trying to keep us honest in there because they've really had great success passing the ball, but you got to still run the ball to keep the defense honest. That was a tackle for loss of one yard for Ferguson. Gavin Hardison, only a redshirt sophomore, but he plays like a veteran. He's the signal caller for the Miners. Hands it off to Awad, who ran for a score earlier. Flag comes in in the backfield. Holding, offense number 68. 10 yard penalty, remains second down. That's on left tackle Zuri Henry, who's making his 24th career start today. It just feels like in the last couple of series, we've had a lot of penalties all of a sudden just jump up in there. But um, here it is to the outside. Let's see if he can't release him. You see it right there in the middle of your screen. It just got caught up in there and held on and um, threw, threw the penalty on him. The Aggies will take it. This has not been a clean half for the Miners regarding penalties. They've had some big explosion plays, which has led to their two score advantage so far. About midway through quarter two. Awad will stay in it running back. Three receivers out wide. And a timeout is called by Utah. You know, I, I see the defense there, Aggie defense. They made a little shift up front there, and it caused some confusion, and that's why they looked at the sidelines and said, I'm not sure. So that, let's just take a timeout. We'll talk about it. Clock was running low there on the minors. And timeout, Utah, their second, 30 seconds. Ever since the first five minutes or so of the game, Danny, the Aggie defense has really, really tarted, started to settle in. Yeah, they, they have. They made some adjustments. So you see them doing a little bit more up front, so they're not just trying to play nose to nose and trying to, you know, bull rush every single time. They're making some adjustments, so they're shifting into something. Lots of pressure from the sides, lots of blitzing, and keeping the pressure going. The official healthcare partner of Aggie Athletics. Second down and 21. Near midfield for the Miners. Hardison pump fakes and then throws, and he skips it. Was looking for Justin Garrett, who had 119 receiving yards on this field two years ago. It's going to be third down and 21 for the Miners. You know, the Eggs are out there playing little defense. They're playing little deep ball right now. So now at, the, at this time of the game, you see them backpedaling out of there, staying deep, trying to keep everything in front of them there. And there just wasn't much to do because they need a long way to go. 
Dalton Bulls had an interception earlier in this quarter for the Yankees in the secondary. Kind of no man's land here for Utah. Clean pocket for Hardison. Tons of time. Settles, throws, and it's incomplete. Michael Poe Jr. and Torin Union both in coverage. Poe dropped about 20 yards in coverage, Danny. Man, and you know, this is one where you're playing a safe. You're playing a safe defense. You're going to drop everyone, only rush three guys. It's hard, though, when you're only rushing three guys because look how much time he has. And when you have that much time, usually the receivers can find a gap a a somewhere, to find an opening, and just sit down there. Not in this case, though. And now we'll get our first look today at freshman Josh Sloan, who will punt for Utah. Sloan is out of Melbourne, Australia. Robert Downs the third is back deep. And that will be poor field position for the Aggie offense. 7.29 left in quarter two. The Miners ahead by two scores. There's a look at linebackers coach Oliver Sukup and Danny, you spoke to the Yagi alum earlier this week. I did. I, I love talking about Coach Sukup because he's a former player. He's lived here. He grew up here. He knows what this is all about. And when coaches are sure if their players really understand what is this rivalry about, they say, go see that man right there. He will tell you what it's about. And let me tell you, he's a great coach. I'd love to just talk to him because I get energized every time I speak to him. It's like, man, I want to go play for this guy. I said, tell me about your team, coach. He said, here's, here's what I like. These, these guys, they want to be here. Yes, some people transferred out, entered the portal, but you know what? Don't care because the guys that are here, they want to be here, and I want to coach those guys. Here's one more quick thing. Three boys, one on the way. He's yep. always coaching at yeah. home, on the field, or maybe he's getting coached at home. I'm not sure. Sure is. The Yankees have outscored the Miners 3-0 in this quarter. They're starting to play better defensively, and the offense has been okay here in the first half. That's Omari Samuels on the ground for eight. Not a ton to complain about offensively, Danny. They're trying to find they, some rhythm here. They've only scored three points, but they've been able to move the football. Yeah, and they have, you know, and if you think about those two big plays that were called back, that really hurt, but, you know, that happened. So they've been able to move the ball. Coach is calling a really good game. I like the balance. Right back to Samuels, who reaches up for the 19-yard line. He gets three, and the Aggies will move the chains. They're going to use Samuels a lot here, it looks like, in this possession. You know, Samuels is a big, strong guy. They have two two running backs, Price and Samuels. They have three, really, but Samuel and Price will be getting a lot, majority of the carries. Samuels is more of the physical guy. Price is the guy that's going to break it open. So pouring it in the middle, it's Samuels. Just under four yards per rush so far for the Aggies offensively. In the air, bobbled, and then incomplete. Downs the third, almost reeled that one in. Yeah, I lost sight of the ball there. I thought he had it for one second. You know, that's a tough pass that he threw at him because if you're looking at it from up here in the booth, right, he gets out there and he's running that, like, flag towards the towards the sidelines, and he had to get it up over the defender and try to drop it in there. That's a tough ball to throw. Mm. That's Josh Caldwell, who's down on the sidelines for the Miners. Caldwell, a veteran in his fourth year with UTEP. He's out of Long Beach, yeah. and he got tangled up right there with Downs the third. Yeah, Jonah, Jonah took a pop, too, you know, so they're getting a little pressure on him there. Had uh, Amari try to pick up the pressure, the, the guy and just couldn't get to him, and, and Jonah took a little pop that last play. A lot of folks leading up to this game were saying this one would be won either side in the trenches. A really good Miners D-line against an experienced Aggie O-line. Johnson cannot get away. Taken down by... Tyreek James from his free safety position. Yeah, so they, they saw that. Jonas saw the pressure coming. It was, he looked down the line. He was coming in off the defender on the corner down to the line of scrimmage. You can see him right there, mm -hmm. and there's nothing he can do. That was one where he was just going to eat and try to get as much yardage as possible. Fortunately, he ran into one of our offensive linemen. Nowhere to go. Third down and 17 coming up. Four receiver look for the Aggies. 
Johnson from just in front of the end zone. That's a tough throw. He completes the pass to Isaiah Garcia Castaneda. But it's well, well short, and the Aggies will have to punt. Yeah, not much he can do there. So he tries to keep it alive with his feet, see if someone could break open, but too much pressure on him. They're putting a lot of pressure on Jonah, and he just wanted to dump that easy pass, get a little more extra breathing room for the punt. We talked about this earlier. It was a quarterback competition in the fall, and it was a close competition as well. Doug Martin said earlier this week at his press conference he probably would play two quarterbacks, and you're probably getting to the juncture now where you have to wonder, will Doug Martin make the switch and bring in Weston Egan? What a punt for Josh Carlson. Garrett handles the punt, and Josh Carlson flips field position a little bit right there. That was a leg right there, right? He put everything into that. That's a nice punt right there to flip the, position, the field position. Like you said, it's very important for the defense. That's a punt of 57 yards, a return of four for Garrett. 98th all-time meeting here in the Battle of I-10. The Aggies have won three in a row. Miners have it won since 2016 when Aaron Jones ran for 249 in the rivalry. Running game has been good today for UTEP between Hankins and A. Watts. This is A. Watt cutting up field. Gets to the third level again. You can argue that A. Watt's been the better of the two so far. Yeah, he's done good, but, you know, there's a... There's a they have a lot, like we've talked about, many of running backs that can get that can get the job done there. So here they are here. They cut they cut the end at the point of attack and just created a hole that he could just stick his nose in and go get some extra yards. Now it's Hankins, the ball carrier. Wrapped up by Chris Ojo, transfer from Eastern Washington, who played in some big ball games there for the yeah, Eagles. That's a great job by Chris. He, he came down in a hurry in there. Everything's downfield, right? When you're a linebacker, coaches say downfield. You want to go into the hole downfield, make a stop, and he did just that. Puts in a good uh, second position here, second down position. Only two receivers for the Miners. Garrett and Cowing, so they go to the ground for Hankins, and he's about a yard and a half short. Uh, first down yardage, so it's going to bring up third down and short, and the Aggies are trying to make a huge stand right here with the clock ticking, almost three and a half left and half one. Now you get down, and you can just see the, the battle that's happening with those big hosses up front in there. It's just a big pushing match in there and it just got to that second level of the backers and able to get some yardage. Let's see if they can make a stop here on third. Miners need the 47. Pressure from Brohar. Lob pass downfield incomplete. Union in coverage. Late flag comes in. It was intended for Cowing. Pass interference, defense number 15. 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. There it is right there. So a little, little, little hand battling back and forth in there. So I guess that's enough they're gonna call that. So big penalty right there. That's our Torin Union young man from Mesa, Arizona who just transferred in quite frankly not too long ago from South Dakota State. He's a redshirt freshman. Stretch handoff to Awad. He finds a couple of holes. On the tackle is Trevor Brohard at the 30. He continues to find holes. That's Ronald Awad, the redshirt junior. Yeah, that's a, it's tough throwing up front, up front there for the defensive line for the Aggies. You know, they've just uh, have been getting back on their heels a bit. And... Um, um, it's just, it makes it hard. And so when you get to allowing UTEP to run the ball, we know from past experience, they'll just continue to do it. Hardison will look to his sideline and change the play. Once again, only two wide receivers, Garrett and Cowing. Running back A. Watts. He'll follow his big offensive line before being upended. 
by Kayla Mills, the 6'5 safety who transitioned last year from wide receiver to safety. Only gets three. Third down and three upcoming, Danny. Yeah, it's, it's a tough one, but like we said, if they're out there and they can get three yards in a cloud of dust every single time, they'll pick up the first here, but let's see what they do. This would be a long field goal for Beckley. Here's Hankins, and Trevor Bohard makes the big stop on there third and three. Go. Trevor Bohard filling the hole, coming downhill, as a, as a linebacker's coach likes to say. New Mexico State, that's our second 30-second timeout. See him right there in the middle, fills the gap, comes down in there, grabs hold and hangs on. That's a nice job right there. Nice stop. Danny, right now, this would unofficially be a 44-yarder for Beckley. So the Aggies pushing him into a tough field goal if the Miners choose to go that route. They did go for it on fourth and one earlier. This would be a fourth and three scenario. And they're going to open it up, right? Get some receivers, spread the defense out. And they're going to throw it on fourth and three. Out route caught. Enough yardage for the first down as Walter Dawn Jr. Year six in the program makes his first catch today. He gets a half dozen. Kirkland coming up in there in coverage on that. And that's a tough one. We're trying to bring pressure. You see Chris Ojo coming with the pressure there. Leaves him out there to try to knock that thing down. and Not before first down. Give is to Hankins, charges for the Aggies stopping the run much better the last quarter plus. You can just tell right now this UTEP team playing with a lot of confidence offensively, which is why they chose to go for it in field goal range on fourth and three. That's Deion Hankins who is down right now on the turf and he is their star redshirt freshman running back. You know, a lot of confidence. The confidence comes, Adam, when, you, when you're able to run the ball. You can throw the ball. They've thrown the deep ball tonight. Um, they've run the ball quite effectively. Let's see what happens in there as he pours it in there. Looks like Hankins is walking off okay. He has 10 carries for 45 yards here in this first half. He was one of the best freshman running backs nationally a year ago. Second nationally last year in rushing touchdowns. You know, from a red zone attempts, the UTIP is two for two tonight. So let's see what they go with a minute 10 left. You know, take some, take some shots in there. They're second. So from an Aggie perspective, you got to be looking for, looking for them to go take one, see if they can't get a TD in there before the half. Miners will get the ball to start half two, by the way. They lead right now by 14. Just converted moments ago on fourth and three. Bullet pass near side caught. That's Justin Garrett. Torin Union's been active. He makes the tackle in the Aggies secondary. Lots of pressure, but he's got that one, two, release the ball, get it out immediately. So nice out quick release. Makes it tough to, because um, the Aggies are playing deep ball, right? They're not letting him in the end zone. Try to keep everything up front there. So that leaves that little out open. I mentioned this earlier too, Justin here. It wears that number two in honor of former Miners tight end Luke Laufenberg. Also wears Laufenberg's name plate on the back of his jersey. Third down is third down. This jumbo look again for the Miners. They had this formation earlier, Danny, on fourth and one. Hardison kept it and was able to get two. He's gonna run it here with the fullback. That's James Tupo, the big junior, 235 from Allen, Texas. And he's able to move the chain. Yeah, that's a tough one in there because you're thinking quarterback, quarterback sneak, quarterback sneak, you're playing it up tough in there, so they just give it out on the tackle there and able to pick up the first down. Clock continues to move. So clock management here for UTEP with under 10 seconds left. 
Low snap, shoestring handle for Hardison. He's hit as he throws, and it whistles out of bounds, intended for Don Jr. And fortunately for the Miners, there is three seconds left on the clock. There was a chance there, Danny. They were going to get out of that without getting a field goal try. I know. Uh, I know their clock is running down there. They almost had a DJ. Did you say how about that pressure coming from from the bottom? All there, DJ came flying in there to put the lick to him, to put the stick on there. Twenty-seven yard try for Gavin Beckley. Tom. New Mexico State, that's a third. But first, a timeout is called by the Aggies. Slow start, Danny. It was an early 17-0 lead for the Miners after one quarter. It has been a much more even second quarter, though. Yeah, it certainly has. You know, and they had a couple of plays in there that we keep talking about that could have changed the tide, but, but uh, they didn't go the Aggies' way. Uh, the fumble kind of hurt a little bit. Uh, but the UTEP offense, they've been sizzling. They've been doing quite well. Five-yard touchdown run by Hankins to start the scoring in the first quarter for the Miners. Then a 37-yard field goal by Beckley. 34-yard touchdown run by Awat, and the Aggies got a second quarter. 27-yard made field goal by Albertson, who hit the upright earlier in the game from a longer distance. This one for Beckley from 27 yards away. Pretty much a chip shot. Good snap, good hold, and it is right through the middle. So that will end one half a play. You have to take the positives though, Danny. In the second quarter, a lot of positives to draw from. Yeah, there was a lot of good things that happened in there, and it's you know it's 20 to three, so you're down by 17, uh, but but you're still in the ball game. A lot of lot of football left in the second half. So make the adjustments, figure out where we need defense. We've got to make some adjustments defensively to show, slow down that UTEP offense. Man, they got some momentum happening right now. Doug Martin making his way over to Stephanie Shields, and he's on the field with Stephanie. Stephanie, take it away. You know, battle by 10, big rivalry game, trailing by 17. What have you liked so far and what needs to change? Well, the only thing that's hurting us right now are the penalties. You know, we've had a touchdown called back, a couple of drop passes, and our defense has settled down. So, you know, we're playing a lot more physical than what we did last spring. So that's encouraging. So we just got to settle down, come back, play a second half. And we got a glimpse of Jonah Johnson's arm. What needs to, what does he need to build on going into the second half? Yeah, he's really played well. He's had, I think, three passes dropped. There would have been big plays, and then obviously the touchdown pass called back. So, uh, you know, he's playing okay. All right, Coach, thank you for your time. All right, Adam, Danny, back to you. Thank you, Stephanie. All sideline reports are brought to you by Memorial Medical Center. Memorial Medical Center, the official health care partner of Aggie Athletics. Miners 20, Aggies 3, the 98th installment of the Battle of I-10. Halftime comes up next. It was the Miners ahead 17-0 after one quarter, but the two teams tied up 3-3 in quarter two, so it's 20-3 UTEP here in the Battle of I-10 this evening from Aggie Memorial Stadium. First half stats are brought to you by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of New Mexico. What really jumps out at you here, Danny? Well, certainly the time of possession. They held, held the ball longer, but uh, total rushing, passing, I think they've done quite well in both those. Um, I think that the penalty yardage is, is uh, really hurting UTEP, but it's also hurting us. Some key times, some key penalties really, uh, really hurt us, but a turnover each. Um, so we're just looking for the defense to kind of step up and slow down that UTIP offense a bit. That will really help us to get some more points on the board, I think. I think it would be foolish to believe there wouldn't be any rust to knock off early, especially for the Aggies. Now, remember, the Miners bring back pretty much their entire team from 2020. They did play in the fall. The Aggies had to play two spring games. 
a lot of guys playing tonight for the Yankees were not in those two spring games because they were mid-year additions or they were added after the spring game. So yep. they're still trying to get this all to mesh. Yep, and no doubt. So you have that, Adam, and then you have coaches trying to make adjustments that says, look, this is what we practice. Okay, forget that. Now we're going to something different. So you put all that together, and it's going to make an interesting second half. It's all about the adjustments that can be made at halftime. Third quarter, very big quarter. We were talking right before the half ended about Jonah Johnson. Would Doug Martin make the switch? It sounded like when he was talking to Stephanie Shields during our halftime interview that Jonah is going to start half two. Yeah, that's what it sounded like. I, I think I would, I would, you know, he's got some experience now. He took a couple of hits. I think he's kind of calmed down a little bit in there, and he kind of knows what to expect. He's made some big throws. I think I would give him another shot and keep with him. If something happens down where you're starting to press and you need a spark, maybe. I don't know if we need that spark yet. We just need to get out there and play some play some penalty-free, mistake-free defense and get on the board on points, and I think we'll be okay. Yeah, that was one of those stats, too. So many penalties. There were 13 combined, and some of them, especially on the Aggies, were costly. Yeah. Yeah, the time of a couple of those, right? We had the big pass play to, to Isaiah. Um, Garcia Casaneta, that really cost us. And so those, some of those are tough. We saw Deion Hankins have to leave the field after a carry late in the first half. We'll kind of keep a close eye on that. Miners will receive the football to start here in half two. Gavin Hardison's played pretty good so far, Danny. He's managed the game well. He has a stable of running backs. He doesn't have to do a ton at that quarterback position for UTEP, but when he's had opportunities, he's capitalized on yeah, it. Yeah, he, he had the one interception, right, where he took a pop, he got an interception, but he had some good receivers that got behind the Aggie defenders, and he made some big passes to, to uh, complete those, so shows his arm strength. He's done quite well back there, but it helps when you have a big old Haas up front mm -hmm. line like UTEP has, they're doing quite well, so we gotta figure out a way to slow them down a bit. Dawn and Garrett back deep to receive. Albertson's kick will be through the end zone. The Miners, since 2017, they are 5 and 39 with only two FBS wins. So this is a program that has really, really been struggling. And they've lost three straight to the Aggies. And they feel good probably where they're at right now, ahead by 17 with the ball to start half two. The Miners last year started this season 3-1, and one, lost their final four, though, and had their three of their final four games last year that were scheduled canceled because of COVID. So they, they really struggled to get to the finish line playing all those games last year. Pistol back is Awat, so Hankins will not start the half. Like we said, though, both guys ran it well. We still haven't seen Wadley or Eldridge. So UTEP coming back, this is where you start testing to say, okay, well, let's see what the defensive adjustments they make. Let's run the ball. Let's see what, we, let's see what they did. Let's see if they do anything different. Um, so now they're just going to kind of fill each other out and then look for the holes in their adjustments and try to exploit them. It was a gain of two for Awat. Quick strike, complete. Justin Garrett makes the catch. That's his third catch today. Six of the seven receptions have come from Cowing and Garrett. Yeah, it seems like from a secondary standpoint, we're really sitting back deep. We're not making sure they are not going to get behind us, right? Number one rule, never get anyone behind you. But sometimes you get too soft and, and you're sitting back there and that little out, it's open right there because you're making sure you don't, you prevent a big play, but you leave the short, mediocre, mid-range play. Catch and run of 14 for Garrett. Hardison will pull it and throw it. Cowing makes a man miss. He will dart inside the 20, and he has a touchdown. He made McCullough miss. Big catch and run for the score for the Miners. Yeah, that's the guy that you have to keep an eye on at all times. You cannot let that, you cannot let that man just run free. Great route where he comes back to the inside. Completely took DJ out of his, um, um, out of his uh, position. And by doing that, it allowed him to go back to the sidelines right there, throws a little move to the inside. He takes, he bites that move, and he leaves the outside. He's got great speed, and no one's going to catch him. 59-yard touchdown catch 
for Jacob Cowing. On a Maricopa, Arizona, point after from Gavin Beckley. And it's good. Well, it was the point of emphasis in the offseason. Doug Martin has not shied away from the Aggies' newness, if you will, in the secondary. And it is rearing its ugly head here tonight, Danny. So now the Aggies will try to respond with their first touchdown of the day, a little pooch kick. The Aggies were anticipating this, and a fair catch is called for by the up man, Alex Escobar, who earlier this week, Danny was put on scholarship. He was also named a team captain last weekend. Quite the week when you're put on scholarship and named a captain. Yeah, that's really saying something about what the team really thinks about you. So I'm kind of excited when I read stories like that because this is about you know, your university, your teammates, your, your people that you're, you're really putting above all and uh, it shows their confidence when it says, yeah, you're our captain. It is Jonah Johnson still in a quarterback. On the ground to Juwan Price. Good first down run up to the 45-yard line. A gain of 15 for Juwan Price, his first big burst of the night. Nice hole up front there. So look at the line. Let's see the line blocking up front. See kind of a zone, push everyone down, push the end back out. Creates that big opening right there where Price just shows his speed to fill that hole and go get some extra yards. Inside handoff to Price, working off the right edge and right tackle, Doro O'Mary, scoots ahead for three. You know, it's, um, I know you're behind, and we want a lot of points in a hurry to catch up, but it's still important to get out there and kind of establish your run because this is going to mean UTEP's going to bring in everyone to stop the run, and when that happens, just set you up for one-on-one -on -one position out there where you can throw that deep ball. Second down and seven. Three receivers, bottom side of the screen. One receiver, top side. Johnson taking his time. Quarterback draw, ran a lot in the first half. He's in a minor territory, slides into one of his teammates, Dominic Jacinto. Outside of the fumble in that first half, he's been effective in the running game at quarterback. He's done quite well, and you're right, outside of that fumble right there. That last time, they're in man coverage, so everyone's got a man, everyone is spread out, so everyone is accounted for except for the quarterback. So that's where the quarterback keeper, and it's wide open in there. Johnson got a dozen. Juco transfer from Fresno City College. He's a newcomer, did play in the two spring games. He's been here now for a year and a half. Lobs it downfield, oh. looking for Cole Harity. He underthrew it. Harity thought he was held I, by Kansas State transfer Walter Neal. I, I think that's what Coach is saying too, by the way. He looks like he reached out there and grabbed him by the back of the jersey. And then let's see what happens. This play takes a long time, so he's got good coverage in there. There's the out mm. right there, and there's the pull and then pushes himself up in front. That's what he was talking about. And I think that's where, uh, that's where Jerry was saying, man, that, I was pulled on, man. He grabbed my jersey. Yeah, Aggies at the minors, 45. Johnson has Samuels. He'll use him on the pitch. Good open field tackle racing up from his strong safety spot, Davion Inyang, the senior from Missouri City, Texas. If he doesn't make that tackle and Price gets that edge, he could be gone. So that was a nice foot grab rope tackle to pull him down. And it was a race to the edge, like you said. Price gets that edge, he could be gone because we've seen him before and he does have wheels. Six carries now for Samuels. Just over 30 yards, 33 to be exact right now. Garcia Castaneda in motion to the near side. On a third and six. A good amount of time to throw for Johnson, oh. and he had a receiver wide open, but he sailed it over the head of Garcia Castaneda. Oh, Isaiah was open on the right side, and we had someone back on the on the downside on the other side of the field that was wide open as well. So there Two Aggies that were out there that were wide open and uh, just missed the pass. 
Well, it's no man's land right here from the 41 of UTEP. Not field goal range, fourth and six. The Aggies down 24, they're gonna go for it. In the spring, they were one for four on fourth down. This is their first try of 2021 here in the fall. They need the 35. Johnson throws it to the 35. Jacinto cuts up field and crawls down to the 25. The Aggies convert on fourth down, Danny. Yeah, that's a nice play. That's a nice call. Nice confidence by Coach, right? He comes out. He's going to run Robert Downs deep to, to Jonah's right side. That would be your left side of your screen. And it really clears out the opening for Jacinto to come underneath there and get the ball. And we know he's fast. There we saw a little action of his speed to throw a little juke in there and get some extra yardage. Two catches for 35 yards now for the transfer from Missouri. Johnson rifles a pass behind Robert Towns III, who was streaking along the near hash. Uh, I think he could have had him. That's two passes that he should have uh, completed, had a better thrown, the one back that we missed. Uh, but this one was another one that was behind him that he was coming across the middle, and uh, he was open. He was there. Downs heads off. Jared Wyatt, a grad student, comes in for him. Wyatt, the receiver, bottom side of the screen. On second down and 10, the Aggies looking for their first touchdown here in game one. Pistol back is Price, explodes, and he's bumped out of bounds by Tory Richardson, backup cornerback from Tomball, Texas. A half dozen picked up by Jawan Price, the redshirt freshman. Price getting a little, uh, little time in here in this, in this third quarter. A couple of really great runs. That's another run there. We know he has lots of speed, and so looking for that one break where he can get to the second or third level and turn it on, you're going to give him a break for a second. Uh, but he's having a great third quarter. Good drive so far for Jonah Johnson in this Aggie offense. Five minutes in, quarter three. Quarterback draw, and the Miners were all over it from the outside. They had... A number of guys chasing down Johnson. Keaton Stewart was right there, big number 54, 305 pounder from Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Yeah, they had him pinned the whole time. They weren't, they weren't buying that one bit, so it was a quarterback draw and just nothing there. It was Walter Neal who was slow to get up. Now we'll head off the field for UTEP. Transfer from Kansas State. He's been active from his cornerback position today. Five minutes in, quarter three. We'll step aside from Aggie Memorial. They just converted on fourth and six moments ago. Pass is deflected, and it will be a turnover on downs. Praise Amahuli, able to Get his paw on that one. Yeah, lots of pressure. I'm not sure that uh, Jonah had anywhere to go with it. There was a lot of uh, the, the actual patterns that they were running were taking a long time and just gave Praise lots of time to get in there, who doesn't need a lot, lots of pressure all over it, and just got his big paw on that. Fourth year in the program for Praise, second team all-conference last season in the Conference USA. Now you can sense some frustration for the Aggies, especially on offense, trailing by 24 early on in quarter three. Miners will continue to run the football. And this is Quadres Wadley, his first carry of the day, goes for eight. This is a guy, Danny, who's in his sixth year in the program. He was Aaron Jones' backup in 2016. Well, you've seen, he's, he has seen a lot in the program for sure. Start of the opener last year before opting out the rest of the season. Takes advantage of the extra year. And he gets it on the stretch play. And it'll bring up third down and shorts. Third down and two coming up. There's no shortage of running backs in that running back Man, for they, Dana Dimmel. They just rotate them in, and, and it just doesn't matter. We've got, we got an Aggie that's down there. But, man, they have a lot of very good running backs. That's Michael Bowe, Jr., who plays at that money position for the Aggies defensively. Well, 
Mike Edwards will come in at that money spot for Bo. Edwards from Muskogee, Oklahoma. That's a position that Frank Spaziani brought to the Aggie defense that bull season in 2017. Malik Demby was great at that position for the Aggies during their bull year. Third and two for Utah. Cowing emotion. Hardison will throw. Flag comes in. Pass is caught by Garrett. And the play is blown dead. Yeah, I think they jumped over on offsides. They had a little motion. Ball start. Offense, number 45. Five yard penalties. Third down. And that's the tight end, Trent Thompson, Jr. out of Houston. He only caught two balls in 2020 for the Miners. It's been a good day for them overall, Danny, but way too many penalties, I'm sure, yeah, for lots, Dana Dimmel's lots like of You can see the penalty right here, the jump right there. He looked back there, wasn't sure. He was trying to get a release off, and someone came up on him and uh, just got a little too much motion. Yeah, they've... Um... Instead of third and two, third and seven. Artisan completes the pass to Garrett, who was wide open across the middle. I mean, he had 10 yards between him and the next defender. Yeah, that that uh, was just a blown coverage or or something because there, he he was wide open. There was no one there, no one within five yards of him crossing across the middle there. You can see it coming across the middle of your screen right there. He's wide open, no Aggie around to be found. So now you got to close down and see what you can get and try to hang on. Now fresh set of downs. Needed seven, he gets 16. Another big, long play for the Miners. That one came on third down. Here's Awat. Awat charges forward and collides with Chris Bell. Man, Chris came in there to fill. He was, uh, that was spilled down to the secondary in a hurry, and that was a big collision right there. Awat, a big back, six foot 205. His fifth year in the program at 190 rushing yards in 2020 during a three and five season for UTEP. The previous play is under review. Hmm. For targeting? Maybe. I, I didn't see him. I didn't see if he dropped his helmet. To, it was a spear or, or I'm not sure. I didn't quite get a good look at it. There was certainly a collision there between Awat and Bell. It, it did look like Chris Bell was a, a little more straight up and might have lowered that crown of his helmet on the tackle. Sure happened in a hurry though, right? Let's take a look at it here. Right up the middle. Yeah, well. We'll see how the officials yeah. see it, but the way things have gone the last couple of years, I'd, that could certainly be. Yeah, I think helmet to helmet, though. Miners have stuck to the running game today. They've had a good day on the ground. Running for 135. The Aggies have run for 78, 243 through the air for UTEP, so. 378 yards of total offense. Here's a play again. And of course, the, the whole, it's a safety issue what they're trying to do and trying to not have helmet to helmet collision there, which I think that probably might have been. And the safety is, let's, let, let's, not, let's not do that because then you get necks and other things, injuries by doing those things. Aggies and Miners starting up the season here in week zero. The Aggies will head on the road to play San Diego State next weekend. Miners will head to the Sun Bowl to play FCS Bethune Cookman. After review, there was personal foul targeting on the defense number two. The 15 yard penalty will be assessed to the dead ball spot. That player has been disqualified. So that is Chris Bell at the safety spot for the Yagi's redshirt junior out of Hendersonville, Tennessee. 
And he's been ejected from the game. We'll probably see a heavy dose of Caleb Mills now at that safety spot. You know, it makes it tough back there in the secondary who was kind of uh, doing all they can to hang on. And so now you got to rotate in and out. So it um, makes it tough for that secondary group of the Aggies. Cowing in motion behind the quarterback, Hardison. Ball carrier here is Wadley. He is running with some force. Did not get a carry in the first half. He goes for nine right there on the first down run. Next back steps up, big hole, puts his head in there and gets some extra yardage. Rodre's Wadley, 220 pounder. He's from Kennedale, Texas, and his sixth year in the program. There goes Cowling again, motioning behind Hardison. Here's Wadley again. He's going to ride Kayla Mills inside the 20. I mean, he is running to get some more carries right now from he Dana is. Dibble. He is, and, and I know Caleb stepped in there, and it's like, well, you know what? The play, the play worked before, and I'm just going to stick with it unless you make an adjustment to it. Offensive coordinators are very keen about saying, you know what, until you stop it, I'm going to keep running the same play, which means it was uh, Caleb. It was your turn to get up in there and uh, try to make a stop, and he did. He did a great job. And really, right now for the Miners, no sense of throwing the football. They are running effectively, and it's still Wadley in the game. They're going to throw it. Cowing makes a diving catch. Michael Bow came roaring up from his money position. But if I'm UTEP, I'm just running the football right now. You're right. You're going to use the clock. Use as much as you can. You, you're owning the line of scrimmage. And so even something short like this, this is going to be a quick toss. You know, keep the clock rolling. Michael Bow came in there, made a great tackle. By the way, you know, you get a step or two. He grabs that thing. He could be gone as well. So, um, but I'm with you, Adam. I, I think if you're UTEP, why do anything else, right? If you own the line of scrimmage, just stay with it. Artisan, design keeper, and he's dragged down. That's Donovan King who's played a good game in the Yagi's defensive line. Yeah, Donovan King did a great job sniffing that play out. A little quarterback draw. He's going to try to move everyone out. Again, you got to keep the ball and not throw it. So you keep the ball, keep the clock running. And it's a quarterback draw all the way and sniffed it out and nothing there. Third down and 16 after the loss of one. A lot of confusion right now for the Miners offensively. Trent Thompson, their tight end, was throwing his hands in the air. And a timeout is called by UTEP, it looks like. Yeah. I think so. I think they ended up with 12 guys on the field. And so it's like, ah, I'm not timeout. sure this is going to work. UTEP, they're first. Media timeout. A big third down and 16 coming up for the Miners. From the 26, the opener in the Battle of I-10. Kevin Hardison, 10 of 15 for 238, a touchdown and a pick. The interception came defensively from Dalton Bulls. Deion Hankins was taken off the field late in the first half. He has not seen the field here in half two. It's been Quadres, Wadley, the veteran, who's had the bulk of the carries in this half. The Aggies getting to the quarterback. Dump off to Wadley. Wadley, second effort. Gets down to the 15, but he's still going to be well short of the yardage needed. Heck of a second effort, though, for Wadley. Yeah, talk about determination. And, and the thing about these UTEP running backs is if you're not going to tackle them, they're going to keep running. So we hit them with everything we had, but didn't wrap them up. And in this case, you're just going to keep running. So there it is, the dump off right there quick. Have a couple guys are going to come in there and make some pops. That was Trevor. Tried to knock him off his feet. Didn't happen. Got to not get to those legs. You got to pull them in. 32-yarder for Beckley, who's already connected from 37 and 27. And the young man out of McKinney, Texas, is now three for three on the evening. Minor lead grows 30 to three here in the Battle of I-10. Great to see fans in the stands. Good crowd tonight here at Aggie Memorial Stadium. It's been a tough year because of COVID-19. For more on that, we send it down to Stephanie Shields on the Aggie sidelines. Hey, Adam. COVID-19 was obviously such a hard year for everyone, especially for the Aggies not being able to have their 2020 season and being more than 600 days 
thing here at home, but look at the crowd here tonight. You could just feel the difference in the atmosphere. There are some people out here wearing masks and, you know, everyone looks like they're having a good time. Some not wearing masks, some are just enjoying this great environment and it's really helping out tonight. You could see some of the players down here. They're reaching up to the crowd, trying to hype it up. And, you know, the, the score is a little bit not, you know, not in the positive side for the Aggies, but that crowd is definitely helping them tonight. So, Adam, Danny, back to you. Thank you, Stephanie. All sideline reports are brought to you by Memorial Medical Center, the official healthcare partner of Aggie Athletics. Danny, we were amazed at the tailgate lot earlier today. I mean, there were tons of RVs. Folks were having fun. It rained for about 10 minutes or so, but that didn't scare anybody away. <laughs> not not this rivalry game. They're they're okay with that, but uh, yeah, so it helped cool, thing down, cool things down a little bit, so it made the, the game more enjoyable, I think. Jonah Johnson still in at quarterback. He is eight for 22 today for 82 yards, does have one fumble. No interceptions and of course, no touchdowns. The Aggies have not scored a touchdown yet. They thought they had one earlier with Dominic Jacinto, but they said his foot was out of bounds. Johnson, as he throws, has the pass batted down, and then Eli Johnson, the big man out of Taylor, Mississippi, pounces on it. Do you feel like Jonas had enough time to throw today, Dan? Well, he's certainly there, and there. So there was a four-man rush on that, and I think he should have had a little bit more time because there was plenty of blocking up front there. But someone just snuck through there. So let's take a look here and see what happens. Got around the edge there, and, and when he did, he was able to just knock it out of Jonas' hand. That time, he did not have enough time to throw the ball. Trying to find a hole is Omari Samuels. The Aggies averaging just under four yards per carry. Samuels now seven carries for 31 yards, four carries for Juwan Price, and then 11 from Jonah Johnson. So the Aggies really haven't been able to consistently establish the run. They will need to throw it here on a third and long. Under three left in quarter three. Heavy pressure, Johnson belted as he throws and Samuels is taken down at the 16 yard line. Just can't seem to find anything working yeah. at him, right? So we try to run the ball a little bit, try some passing. We got uh, too much pressure on the passing. In this case, we're gonna dump out a little screen play here. They sniffed it out, came screaming in for quick cover on the ball. Nothing there for extra yardage. So it's a rough in the passer, 15 yards, automatic first down. It's Arna Amahuli. I knew Jonah was belted. It was hard to tell initially if it would be a rough in the passer call or not. And penalties continue to hurt the Miners. Yeah, it's right to the helmet. So he can't get, can't get up in his face. So the Aggies catch a break. They're up to the 35 now. That's a huge break late in this quarter. They fake the handoff to Price. Some time to throw here for Johnson. Come back around to Downs the third. And a flag flies where he caught it. And Robert Downs the third is slow to walk off to the Aggie sidelines. He might have been banged up right there. Already nine penalties on UTEP. This could be the 10th. Not sure where that penalty is. Holding defense. 10 yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Well, he caught the ball anyway, even though he was held. 10 penalties on UTEP. Two big ones during this drive. You know Dana Dimmel will be furious when you're in double figures and it's not even the fourth quarter yet. Pistol back is Price. 
Only two out wide, tight end in motion. Tomas Whitford, who's only been targeted once. Rolling right, front side pressure. Long toss downfield, under thrown. Jared Wyatt makes the maneuver, hauls it in, and there might be a pass interference on the play. It's a great, it's a great job by, by Jared to, to make a catch there. He may have pushed the guy coming back to make the play on the ball. And so it kind of came out of Jonah's hand like a, it's just a, a little wobbler, right? So this is, he was going for everything. He's going deep. We know he's got the arm, strong arm. And Jared just played through the defender. So they may have just called him for that. You know, offensively, that's what they teach you, though. If the ball's in the air, go get it. And same with the defense. It's like, go get it. It's, it's, everyone has a right to the ball. But I think when he put his hands on the defenders, when they really got into trouble. He's trying to make a play, right? He's trying to make a play. Still no catches for Wyatt, a grad student from Wiley, Texas, who caught seven balls back in 2019 for the Yankees. So he's one of the returners. Made the catch, but it's negated. The Yankees are pushed back 15 yards. First down and 25. In case you're just joining us, the Yankees have only used one quarterback so far today. Jonah Johnson, the Juco transfer from Fresno City College. We still haven't seen Weston Egan. Doug Martin said earlier this week at his press conference that he probably would play both. He hasn't played Egan yet as we approach a minute left here in the third quarter. Aggie offense still searching for that rhythm. They've moved the ball during this drive because of a pair of UTEP penalties. Johnson will step up underneath and it is thrown too low. He was looking for the top returning wide receiver, Robert Downs the third. I think Robert Downs the third may have had a step on the defender as well, crossing underneath there. And so it was just gonna be a little, little quick flip out to him. But maybe someone hit it in the, on the line of scrimmage. I'm not sure I saw anything there because it went completely behind the receiver. We saw Amahuli pat away a pass earlier. This UTEP defense has been great today. They were top 40 nationally in rushing, rushing defense in 2020. New defensive system this year with the new DC. And they played well here in the opener. Johnson hit twice as he throws, and it goes out of bounds on the sideline. And Danny, he is getting handled I was thinking, by the defensive line. I was right thinking now. the same thing, Adam. He has taken some punishment in this third quarter. I think they've mixed up a couple different uh, ways they're going to come get him to uh, get some stunts and blitzes in there. And he has taken his fair of hits in there. Here it is. He knew it was coming, and he was just trying to get the ball out. Maybe someone can make a play on the ball. We're getting late in the game. And uh, just couldn't do it because he took such a big hit. Yeah, he's getting he's getting hit pretty hard back there. Yeah, you can see the frustration in his eyes right now. He just doesn't have a whole lot of time to throw, especially in this quarter. I felt like at times in quarter two, the offensive line held up strong. But here in this quarter, there hasn't been a ton of time to throw for Jonah. Carlson with the punt. Dangerous handle Whoa. for Garrett. Usually you'll see the return man let that one bounce out. He handles, and the minor offense goes back to work in the final minute of this third quarter. A quarter controlled by UTEP. They've outscored the Yankees 10-0 here in this quarter. Yeah, I think when uh, UTEP gets the ball, they know where they are in the game. They, they have a good grasp of what's happening on the offensive line of scrimmage, and it's just a lot of dose of... Uh, you know, three yards in a cloud of dust, keep that clock rolling, and um, we'll just wait them out. And for the Aggies, it's pressure. You gotta make big plays down play, downfield, and that's where you kind of see the, the Jonah getting a little, a lot of hits. New quarterback for the Miners. Calvin Brownholds takes over. Hands it off to Quadres Wadley, who continues to break tackles nearing midfield. He has run it oh. as well as anybody we have seen in years on this field here in this quarter. He's running with a purpose too, right? So even when the Aggies coming back in that secondary to come up there to make a play on him, he just continued to pump his legs. And so, you know, it's, it's tough when you're coming to screw up because you have to break down right there and make a play and then hold on. He gives him a little stiff arm and he just keeps pumping his legs and running. 
That's Kayla Mills. He's given him everything he has. Chris Ojo, the player down right now defensively for the Aggies. So a new quarterback for the Miners, Calvin Brownhold, takes over for Gadivan Hardison, who has played well. Hardison, 11 of 16. Brownhold actually started the 2020 finale for the Miners. Hardison was out because of COVID protocol, so Brownhold started that finale against North Texas and played pretty well. He was 18 of 37 last year for 255. He played in all eight games. He only started one, though. And I think a lot of coaches will tell you, especially this year, if you have two quarterbacks, a situation like this where you're up a bunch, you might right. want to get Brown Holtz in because you could need him Absolutely. because of COVID. Yeah, you know, COVID has really changed this strategy for a lot of coaches because you've got to have two or three guys deep because you don't know when, when one or two are going to be captured and then you're gone and then you have to get to that third guy or second guy. That ends three quarters. The Miners outscore the Yagis 10-0 in the third. The fourth comes up next. A good third quarter running the football for Dana Dimmel's offense. 173 rushing yards now for UTEP. That third quarter was paced by Quadres Wadley, the sixth year running back in that UTEP program. He ran for 111 against the Aggies in 2018. This Aggie defense has shown some signs here today, Danny. Certainly the second area struggle, that's for sure. Too many big plays for UTEP. And now the Aggies are trying to find a way to stop the run again. Yeah, I think you until you stop the run, it's going to be hard to do anything else. And so you got to figure out a way to get up front and just slow them down. Calvin Brownhold, who ran it well in the finale, against North Texas, keeps it here from his quarterback spot. He's a redshirt sophomore from Carmichael, California, six foot two, 210. Two passing touchdowns, four picks last year in those eight games, only one start for Brown Holtz. Yeah, I think you're gonna see a lot of uh, just keep the, keep the ball, uh, control it on the ground, let the clock roll, and uh, they're clearly in, in um, control of the game. Empty backfield, the fullback is Forrest McKee. Brownholtz will find his fullback. Tackled by Michael Bowe, Jr. Lazarus Williams was also in on the stop. Gain of five for Brownholtz. Third down and two for the Miners. Of concern for Miners fans, we haven't seen Deion Hankins in the second half. Right. Willie Eldridge is now in at running back. But you know, Adam, if if, if you get a little tweak or something. Timeout, UTEP, they're second. If you get a little tweak, I mean, if you got in control of the game, do you want to bring them out or not? Or do you want to go to your other guys since you have it in control? Early on in quarter four, third and two for the Miners when you come back. UTEP trying to snap a four game losing streak that dates back to 2020. The Aggies looking for their fourth win in a row against the Miners and it's been all UTEP tonight. From Aggie Memorial Stadium, the return of Aggie football here at home. First home game since November 23rd, 2019. And the Aggies will have a lot to work on this week in practice, Danny. It's going to be a growth from week to week, and uh, we'll see if the Aggies can find some rhythm and offense. The remaining 13-44, and then defensively, it starts with stopping the run, right? Stop. Uh, you're right. You got to stop the run before you do anything else. And so Trevor, Trevor Brower, he's got nine tackles, one tackle for a loss, and so there's some bright spots to build upon, but. That defensive line up front, Coach Mumford's group, he's got to really get that going and try to figure out a way to stop them or slow them down up front because once they own the clock and they're ahead, it's just hard to catch up. Miners need the 43. Brown holds trying to push the pile, and the quarterback does so all the way down inside the 40. He's a big guy as well, 210-pounder, yeah. yeah, and 
I, I don't know if coaches love seeing their quarterback push the pile, but you know what? He's fighting for playing time as well. No, no kidding. And, and you go back to the coach and say, Coach, you called the quarterback draw. What did you want me to do, fall down? It's like, no, I'm going to go get some extra yards. Yeah, 6'2", 210. He did not shy away from sticking his helmet down there and picking up some extra yardage. Brown Holtz has not thrown the football yet. Once again, he's in a reserve role coming in for Hardison. He's thrown for 249 on 11 of 16. Here's Wadley. He'll follow his fullback, McKee. Gets down to the 35. He picks up four. Once again, Quadres Wadley was the backup in 2016 for star NFL running back Aaron Jones, who has been in the NFL for a while now, and Wadley is still playing for Utah. Yeah, so let's see what that offensive line looks like here in the defensive line. You can see it's just hat on hat, man on man, and they're just getting us up. And once you get underneath someone, you can start putting them on roller skates, getting them out of the way, and you end up giving up three to five yards. Josh Farr in motion. Brown Holtz will swing it out to him, and he led him a little bit too far. First pass try for Brown Holtz, and complete intended for Farr. Going to try a little uh, razzle-dazzle, right? Swing someone around from the outside, bring them around, and just dump them the ball, let them get upfield. But uh, coming in cold, not enough warm-up, just threw it right in the dirt. We really haven't talked a whole lot today about receivers for UTEP outside of Cowing and Garrett. Those two guys have pretty much done all the damage in the air. Heavy pressure, pass incomplete. That was intended for Tyron Smith. I believe that's the first time he's been targeted today. So UTEP still needs to seek some depth behind Cowing and Garrett. Yeah, and, and there was, he was open. He had him right there coming underneath, but he just threw that. He threw that a little hard, it seemed like, but bounced off his hands, trying to figure out, you know, let me get some rhythm. It's interesting because there's 12, 12 minutes left, and so clearly they're just not going to run the ball the whole entire time. And so, like, they're into this, let's try to work on backup positions and see who can do what. And so they're bringing out all kinds of, of plays that they're going to run, passing and running. UTEP two for two on a fourth down today. Pass is incomplete. Drop by Miles Banks, Redshirt Jr. Transfer from Blinn Juco. Turnover on downs for the first time today for the Miners out of the Conference USA. So getting in there, they get in the number two some time to figure out if they can um, get some extra guys uh, for backup. This one hit him in the hands, maybe push, should have pulled it in, but in any event, it's a punt back to the Ags. Let's see what they can do offensively. New quarterback for the Aggies, Weston Egget will take over, and he's in for the first time in a fall game. Weston did play in the spring in game two, only one series before he injured his foot. Rehabbed, found his way back. He's healthy going into the fall. And he will hand it off to Juwan Price. So we'll see what Weston Ega can do here. He is from Santa Clarita, California, 45 minutes from LA. You know, in spring, he came out and he had a great spring. He threw the ball with some zip. Uh, just two different styles of quarterback between Jonah and Weston. Speaking of fighting for playing time, Ega, if he plays well, could essentially get the start in game two. He'll toss it downfield. Overthrows his intended receiver, Garcia Castaneda. He was the spark plug, Danny, in that second spring game against right. Dixie State. Right, he did. He came in there and just marshaled some nice nice uh, uh, drives downfield to get us on the board and uh, get everyone moving along. And he's a, a more, I don't know, outspoken type of leader. Um, several different types of leaders, so he's one that likes to speak out. He's a he's a motivator, and so big arm, both Jonah and him, both strong arms, and are, can throw the ball down the field. He get on third and six. He can run it as well. He'll tuck it, and Egit gets the first down with his legs. We saw him throw a block yeah. in the spring game. That's what got him injured, so if he's a little tentative doing stuff, blocking or running, that's probably why. No one, nothing to do with the ball. Everyone's covered downfield. He had no doubt in taking the ball and running it. So there you go. Get a little time. 
He could get seven with his legs. He's out of West Ranch High School. Redshirt freshman, third year in the program. Play action. Egit will throw it. He has Terrell Warner jousting for positioning. And it should be pass interference on the defense. There in coverage from the nickelback, Dennis Barnes. There was a lot of jousting for positioning there, down there. There was. But you know, what Weston had no... Defense number 13, 15-yard penalty from the previous spot, automatic first down. Weston had no doubt he was going to play a little huck a chuck of football and get that thing downfield, though, did he? And he, he let it rip. Good things can happen when you throw the ball downfield. The Aggies are trying to improve in that vertical game this year. They feel like they have two quarterbacks with great arms in Egit and Johnson. Pistol back is Escobar, the former walk-on who was awarded a scholarship on Tuesday before practice. Escobar ran for 81 yards in the spring finale against Dixie State. This is his first carry today, although he's been in a few plays. Hey, nice little run there, right? Jumps to the outside, gets some positive yards in there, and that's a nice little run. Seven yards for Escobar, redshirt sophomore from Peoria, Arizona. Now he'll head off. Jawan Price came in for Escobar. And the defensive line for the Miners is able to sniff out the run. Got some twos in now for UTEP, so they're going to give some of their starters a rest. So we'll see if the Yankees can take advantage offensively. Tackle was made by Gary Third. Brings up third and three. Probably a four down scenario for this Aggie offense, trailing 30 to three. And Price can't go anywhere. He's going to be a couple yards short. And I would assume the Aggies will go forward on fourth and two. You know the Aggies have two really good running backs this year with Samuels and Price. Neither of the two able to bust one loose today. Fourth and two for Egitz. Toss is near side, hauled in Jared Wyatt. And he gets the first down, his first catch today. Yeah, there he goes, get on the board. You know, when you're, when you're out there and they bring out the twos, it, it doesn't matter. You still get out there and you still have to execute because when you get in the film session, Coaches don't care who, if it's one or two that's out there. He, they want to know, are you doing your job? Are you running your route like we teach you to run your route? So everyone's still out there churning and burning. Omari Samuels returns at tailback. He'll block here. Egit throws it far side, has a man, incomplete. Flag flies, though, intended for Robert Downs the third. It was the nickelback, Barnes in coverage. He was called for pass interference moments ago as well. We saw, we saw Downs get behind the defender. So pass once he got... Defense number 13, 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Once he gets behind the defender, I think Weston had no doubt where he was going with the ball. See him right there behind the defender? That's the guy I'm going to right there and lets it rip. So that is two pass interference calls on... Barnes, as of late, 12 penalties on UTEP for 140 yards worth of penalties. Racing in is Connor Helsius, takes over for Justin Prince, who had a race off the field. Running back. There for the Aggie Samuels, ran into one of his offensive linemen. I think that was Doro Mary who he ran into. Lock moving under eight and a half to go here in the fourth quarter. The Aggies trying to get a good taste in their mouth, heading into next week at San Diego State. A really tough challenge on the road coming up next Saturday. Yeah, that'll be a tough one. That'll be a good one. Egan in at quarterback. 
Fakes the handoff to Samuels, and he throws out of the reach of Jacinto. He was open in the end zone. He had him. He missed that one. So he came, came rolled. He was open, and he just threw it behind him. Jacinto you know today, two catches for 31 yards. He's been targeted a bunch. See him here crossing at the bottom of your screen. He just throws the ball behind him. Some of this, too, is you get out there and your nerves are going and you're ready to go. It's you get your chance and you zip it in there and you get it behind him a little bit. A little bit of rhythm, you know. So it's still, you know, his first drive coming in. He's doing quite well. Third and goal from the eight. You get back to throw, lobs it. He has Cole Harity, who almost made a one-handed catch. Airdy also had a good spring. He was really, really active. One of the most targeted players by both Egan and Johnson during the two spring games. So fourth and goal from the eighth. The Aggies will go for it. You know, I, I like Weston's uh, approach to it. That was a tough ball right there. That was very tough to get it over top of the defender, but he had no doubt about what he was going to try to do with it. So he's showing a lot of confidence back there, Adam. Three receivers, Jacinto tight to the right. Garcia Castaneda in motion. The tight end, Whitford, is in. On fourth and goal, Egit will sling it out of the reach of Juwan Price. Even if Juwan caught that one, it would have been tough to they were run it in for the score. They were closing down in a hurry for sure. So in a normal scenario, the Aggies... Probably would have got three out of it. But they're trailing by 27. They went for it on fourth and goal. And they turn it over on downs back to Utah. Adam Young, Danny Nee, Stephanie Shields with you from Aggie Memorial. Miners ahead 30 to three. Tonight's Hispanic Heritage game is presented by Chorus Light and brought to you in part by financial services partner, Nusenda Credit Union and the Las Cruces Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. 440 yards of total offense for the Miners, 187 for the Aggies. The Aggies have only thrown the ball for 89 today between Johnson and Egan. They've run it for 98. Doug Martin looking on as his defense has back to work. Brown holds at quarterback for the Miners. First carry today for Willie Eldridge. That's the fourth back used by UTEP. He gets three. He's a freshman out of Houston, year two in the program for him. And they just keep coming. They got a lot. Empty backfield here for Brown Holtz. Redshirt sophomore from Carmichael, California. Quarterback draw, can't get it to the outside. And he's taken down by Devlin Kirkland after slipping away from Taylor Milton initially. You know, this is the part of the game where you have to kind of buckle down and still do your job and still look on, look at the things that you need to work on. So coaches are looking, well, who, what player is doing what? So which player is gonna give in? Which player is going to step up? Okay, so this one didn't work to our advantage this time around. But, you know, tomorrow starts all over again. You start with the films and you clean it up and see what you can make adjustment-wise, and you get after the next game. A lot of season left. This is only game one, and it's the first fall game for the Aggies since 2019. Brown Holtz will air it out at pinballs in the hands of DJ McCullough. McCullough inside the 20, and it's going to be first down and goal for the Yagis, the second pick of the day. That's a great job right there, you know. So he's had a, a, tough, a tough outing covering some great receivers, and so when you get a break that pops your way, jumps in your hands, you got to make the most of it, and he certainly did that. So here it is here, good coverage, trying to go for the deep ball back there. Tips it up. Returns it for some good yardage. 
Devlin Kirkland got his hands on it initially, and then McCullough was Johnny on the spot. Ball at the nine-yard line. First and goal for Weston Egget in the Aggie offense. Samuels, the running back, he bobbles it initially. Lucky he grabbed it. He almost fumbled that football on the handoff. Getting a lot of pressure still on that defensive line up there. There wasn't nothing he can do. There was everyone in his face right away. So, yeah, tough. The Aggies did lose three. So it's second and goal from the 12th. Egan will throw, has some time to throw. Now the pocket collapses and he has swarmed down. James Neal with a sack from his linebacker position. Yeah, not much he can do there. If you're looking downfield, you can see that every receiver is in the, that is in a pattern is covered there's nowhere to go with the ball and nowhere he could escape to, so he ended up just eating it for a sack. Well, it was first and goal from the nine. Now it is third and goal from the 26. Receiver bottom side is Cole Herity. Three receivers top side. Tailback Escobar. Run pass option for Egget. Throws it into triple coverage, and then Harity on the recovery almost made the catch. And it falls incomplete in the end zone. Yeah, that's a, that's a, tough, that's a tough pass in there when you're throwing it into double, triple coverage. And, but Weston gave it a shot, and it's like, well, nothing to lose at this point, so let's give it a roll. Speaking of nothing to lose, you're down 27, so the Aggies will go for it. On fourth and goal from the 26. Warner is in motion. Front side pressure comes. Egget will tuck it. Egget will run. Weston Egget spins down to the five yard line, but he can't get in the end zone. Heck of an effort, but the Yankees turn it over on downs for the second straight possession. Yeah, that's a heck of a run right there. You know, so I'm not sure if that's exactly what they were looking for, but everything else was covered. Nothing else he could do with the ball, but take it and, and try to run with it and did a great job. He's got some pretty good wheels there. Showed a couple couple moves in there I kind of liked. Football back to you, Tep, from the six when you come back to Aggie Memorial. Miners ahead of 30 to three. We've seen two Aggie quarterbacks today, most recently Weston Egan. For more on the redshirt freshman from Santa Clarita, California, we send it down to the Aggie sidelines and Stephanie Shields. It was a, a shift in the dynamic down here when Weston Egget came in, you know, getting so close to scoring down there. But the team, you could just tell there's a shift in energy down here. It's getting a little close, but, you know, Weston Egget, it was an either or situation coming into this game. All right, now Weston Ega did get his debut in the spring against Dixie State where he completed six out of eight passes for 61 yards in one score. Now this is a young quarterback and we're waiting to see, we're hoping for some things to happen here, but that di dynamic did change here. Adam, back to you. Thank you, Stephanie. All sideline reports are brought to you by Memorial Medical Center. Aggie's back on defense. Miners pinned deep into their own territory. Yeah, I think a lot shifted in the spring, Danny, when Weston came in and, and played well. And Doug Martin kind of had the game plan today that he would play two different quarterbacks. And he has played two, Jonah Johnson, eight of 24, Weston, one of six. And my feeling is they will battle each week in practice to see who starts that Saturday. Now, I totally agree because it's not the same exact situation that they were in, but still, Weston came in and gave him a spark, and I do think it's going to put a, some competition during the week. Willie Eldridge on the ground once again, freshman out of Houston. We are seeing our third quarterback today for the Miners. Isaiah Bravo is in, six foot three, 195, senior out of West Covina, California, transfer from Cerritos College. So Hardison, Brown, Holtz, and now Bravo.
Clock moving three and a half left. This is only game one. We cannot reiterate that enough. A lot of football left in 2021. Bravo will hand it off to Eldridge. And the Aggie D-line stands tall. Donovan King, once again, he's had a heck of a game today in the opener. He has. You know, back to your comment about lots of football left. Here, here's the thing that, from a coaching perspective, that you have to look at. So you know what doesn't work, and you know that the adjustments that you have to make, you're willing to try more because maybe the last time it didn't work at all. So this is where you have to really start trying to figure out, okay, now I want to make two or three adjustments and see what the outcome is. So you adjust the input to get a different output. And you're going to continue to do that through the year. Now, you have to hurry to do it, but that's what they're going to continue to do starting from tomorrow when they start to look at films. Dangerous situation here as Sloan punts it out of his own end zone. Robert Downs, the third, calls for a fair catch at midfield. Aggies will have San Diego State next weekend. That game, Danny, is actually going to be in Carson, California. San Diego State taking the show on the road for home games this year due to renovations. Then the Aggies will travel to Albuquerque for their second rival game against UNM. Then they come home against South Carolina State. Then they stay at home against Hawaii. On the front end, the front five games this year, the schedule's winnable. Yeah, no doubt about it. I've talked to you know many of the coaches about this schedule, and they like it. I mean, this is you, you're playing some good football, and uh, each week is going to be a challenge. Juwan Price, the running back. Weston Egit still in at quarterback. And Price is taken down for no gain. San Diego State expected to be good again this year. Uh, they were here at Aggie Memorial back in 2019. UNM appears to be improved, trying to build off their finish to the 2020 season when they played their home games in Vegas. And then you have an FCS in South Carolina State and a Hawaii program that is kind of an enigma right now. Passes out of the reach, downs the third, the intended target, whistles out of his reach. As you're starting to work on things, you know, this, this is where the, these little ones where you have to keep your head in the game and you got to make those catches. And so I'm certain the coaches are going to try to clean all those things up. Downs the third, still doesn't have a catch today. He had 22 catches in 2019. The top returning wide receiver. The Aggies from midfield. Egan, pocket collapses and he throws it over the head of Paul Herity. If you're breaking down this offense today, Danny, what do they need to improve on this week in practice in your eyes? Well, uh, I think um, I think you got to work on that offensive line. So I saw a lot of pressure that I think Jonah took on some of those plays, and I and I think that really caused some consternation on trying to get that rhythm going. You know, for a quarter or two, um, you were doing quite well of, of giving lots of time to complete it. And um, so I think from an offensive line perspective, we got to clean up some things there. He get belted as he throws, and the Aggies will turn it over on downs for the third straight drive. Nobody with more than two catches today. Four guys have two receptions for the Aggies, Jacinto, Garcia, Castaneda, Samuels, and Price. And then one for Wyatt, so... It's been spread around, but nobody's really had a big day for the Aggies in the receiving game. They've only thrown for 89 yards between Johnson and Egit, and 82 of those came from Jonah. Um, you know, there there was, Jonah did have two, by the way, two big pass plays that were, one called incomplete out of the end zone, right? And then the Isaiah uh, Garcia Castaneda catch that was a huge play. Those could have been game changers, so that would have really bolstered it quite a bit. Bravo, still the quarterback for UTEP. He'll keep it himself. I like this idea by Dana Dimmel. Don't just stick with one quarterback. Like yep. we talked about earlier, yeah. you're probably going to need a couple during the course of the season. So they've used Brown Holt and Bravo just to get them some time today. 
Yeah, I think with this COVID protocol, I, I think it can really uh, run through some positions. So it's nice to be deep, as deep as you can be. Meanwhile, for UTEP, they're going to host FCS Bethune-Cookman at the Sun Bowl next Saturday. So they're eyeing a 2-0 start. They'll be heavy favorites in that one. And after losing their final four games in 2020 following a 3-1 start, they're going to leave Las Cruces with an impressive rivalry opening win here tonight. It's going to be their first win in the rivalry since 2016. So the Silver Spade and the Brass Spittoon will head back to El Paso, those two traveling trophies every single year. You know, UTEP's played solid all the way around. I mean, they've had a lot of penalties. That's really hurt them a great deal. But, uh, you know, strong defense and a very good offense. We've saw passing, good deep ball, running the ball. Um, so they've got some good things happening for them. Aggies, they will too. They, they just got to get a little rhythm with some of the regular guys that are used to playing. Bravo will keep it again, trying to bounce it to the outside. Good open field tackle is made by Union with 10 seconds left, and it looks like UTEP will run out the clock. So the Silver Spade and the Brass Spittoon will leave Las Cruces for the first time since 2016. The Miners defeat the Aggies here today. The Aggies finally return home as they return to Aggie Memorial. First home game in 644 days, and the Aggies just never could generate any offense. And they lose this one today by the final score of 30 to three. <laughs> we'll head to break, 30 to three, the final score, the new Senda Credit Union postgame show comes your way next. 